All right, that should be doing it. Some Awesome. Welcome, guys. I mean, it wouldn't be one of our live streams if we didn't start off with a short technical difficulty. <laughs> uh, luckily, we have our main IT guy here, and he saw the problem instantly. Awesome. So, oh, awesome. Yep, let's awesome. go ahead and mute our laptops. <laughs> mute my sound. Yeah. So, last of our 13 days of Christmas sale. It's been really nice sale, good success. We hope you guys are enjoying everything that we put on sale for you, all the little things we did. Uh, we really did a lot more on social media th with this sale than we have in ones past, just trying to make sure everyone was aware of them. Um, had a blast doing a lot of the things. Now, before we get into any of that, I don't see him yet, but somebody who is at our last live stream, Nick Hall, actually owns a farm and he has bees on there and he sent us some of his honey. It is delicious. So he sent it and then he called us to warn us about this stuff. It says hot on the top and he's not joking. It is really hot honey he made with ghost peppers. It's delicious, but it definitely will get you starting to sweat. So we did a couple things with that and we'll get into that a little bit more later. But uh, if you wanna check him out, he's at Maple Street Honey is his Facebook page. Uh, right now that's the only way you can contact him, but it's well worth it if you wanna try it out. Really, really good stuff. So where do we want to start? I'd say we remove the mystery and make what the giveaway is. Tell people what the giveaway is. Okay. Um, for the last couple of live streams, we've done a, a stuffer. I think everybody enjoys the stuffers. Sure. Um, great stuffer, but we don't want to do the same old thing this time. So uh, we've got a brand new product. Um, we've talked about them a little bit, um, but we just got in Friday. Um, our brand new Walton's 8.7 inch and 12 inch slicers. So we are going to be giving away one of the Walton's 8.7 inch slicers. Um, the first thing we did when we got them in, I told John, hey, get these out of the box, um, start playing with them. We've used some of them in the past, but different sizes, different models. Um, this is a new one, so yep. we were using it. John, I, he can give you the whole lowdown, but he sounded super excited. And as I looked at them, messed with them, they're very heavy duty. Um, very cut very well yep so we're gonna unbox an 8.7 inch and play with it here um, we've already unboxed a 12 inch it is a beast we were slicing uh, some of the salami or bologna I made literally paper thin I mean you could see through it mm -hmm. and it was chugging through everything so we've got some cheeses we got some meats we got some breads we got all sorts of stuff we're gonna unbox the small one and we'll use both of them a little bit now that big one, when we get it up here, it's gonna dominate about this much of the table. So you might not see us so much, but we will get some, uh, some cool things sliced. So we're looking forward to that. As far as um, other things, what we might be looking for you guys in the comments today is something that you might wanna see on sale a little bit later this month. We are looking for some ideas. During our last live stream, we had a, a good success with you guys suggesting what you wanted to see. Towards the end of this month, we are gonna have another sale. Um, we were just looking for some ideas on what you guys might want to see. Won't be able to do everything, but sometimes if we can take one of your suggestions and use that, that's better for everybody, right? Yeah. Okay. And if you guys haven't already seen, hopefully you are subscribed to our email list. Um, today is one of our biggest sales of the year. Um, if you haven't ordered yet, um, get your order in before midnight tonight. Um, at midnight, all our sales end. Um, we've got a ton of actual items on sale themselves, but we've also got that Christmas 18 coupon that gets you 15% off of everything at waltonsinc.com. The only exception there is stuff that's already on sale. Um, but use Christmas 18, 15% um, off and free shipping over $50 with that coupon. And that ends today, last yep. day for all that. All right, so um, real quick, because I've been dying to try the smoked honey <laughs> on bread. So we did two things. I smoked uh, some of the hot and some of the regular honey. I just cold smoked it in our PK100. Uh, and then I also made some honey roasted peanuts out of the hot and the regular. Uh, and then we've just got some bread that I'm gonna pour the honey on <laughs> like a pig. Uh, you're just gonna have to bear with us as we chew through it. Normally, like when we do this on a video, I try to mute this part, but I'm just gonna have to hear it. Are we not gonna do our normal intro for Willow Barbecue? <laughs> we are not gonna okay. do our normal. All right, so you want to try the hot honey or the regular honey first? I do the regular because otherwise the hot's going to overwhelm You know, we should it. probably just dip it in there. It'll be easier than trying to... Wow. 
Yeah, see, that would be a perfect little close-up right there. All right, I'll try and cover my microphone a little bit. Is that you? Mmm. That's really, really good. The honey picks up the smoke incredibly well. Mm -hmm. I mean, extremely well. As soon as it, I didn't even get it in my mouth before you could really start tasting it. Yeah, anything sweet like that, I think that's one of the things we learned that sweet things smoke very well. Mm -hmm. Anytime we've done other stuff, it kind of turns out weird if it's not it sweet to start with. Often turn out weird. So honey is perfect to smoke. Uh, and then another thing we're going to do with these, and I, I'm very excited for the hot honey when we do it, is ribs. Oh. I can't wait to slather on some of that hot honey on ribs. And again, it was Maple Street, right? Maple Street? Maple Street honey. All right. Took half the container. With I one did. Minute. It's warm. Even Very better. Warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nick actually called us right after I'd unbox this, and he's like, be careful with that hot honey, because it's not joking around. It's not. That's extremely good. That's amazing. Yeah. Nick, I saw that you're here, so thank you. That stuff is excellent, and you should be selling a ton of that. That is awesome. Okay. With that, should we try to answer yeah. some of the questions yep. that are down here? Let's, let's start getting through those. Well, first, Marty, that is very funny. That's what I was laughing at earlier. Marty says, your chairs look like an orange man wearing a Speedo. <laughs> He's not wrong. I've, I've never looked at <laughs> Neither that way. Neither have I, but, but hey. Now I'm not going to look at these chairs the same again. <laughs> wherever your mind takes you, Marty. So on the first question, we got Kirk asking a question. Um, John and Austin, I'm going to be making 25 pounds of ring bologna with venison. I've purchased the seasoning. Uh, the other additives, but I'm not sure how I should adjust my meat block. Um, it's a good question. And all, all our recipes and stuff like that, um, we always list like what our, our baseline for, for a guideline is on Meatgistics. If you look under Meatgistics, the Learning Center, we've got how to make meat recipes. Um, ring bologna is one of the ones we have under there. Um, <coughs> for all intents and purposes, on meat blocks, a lot of it is preferential on what you want. Yeah. Um, most of the time when you're making a cured sausage, you're going to be best off doing at least 20% fat. Um, but that could be more, could be less. Kind of depends on what you want out of it. I wouldn't go a whole lot leaner because then the sausage may be a little dry. Um, but some sausages, you can go up to like 40% fat. Um, for ring bologna, um, we have one of our more complicated meat blocks for that one. Yeah. Um, we say about seven pounds, seven and a half pounds of 85-15 lean beef, and then 8.75 pounds of 80-20 lean pork, and then 8.75 pounds of just a 50-50 um, lean to fat ratio on just pork trim. So by the time you add all that up, I'm not sure what that final percentage comes to be. I probably should know. Yeah, um, it's too much math. Too much math off the top of my head here, but um, I would go under those guidelines also knowing that if you want a little more fat, a little less fat, you're not going to hurt anything to do kind of what you want with it. To a certain degree, obviously, don't go too light on the fat. Um, and, and recently on Meatgistics, we've had a lot of either questions or comments on why we always recommend pork fat. I know we've covered it in the past, but just real quick. Uh, pork fat's got a creaminess to it that other fats like uh, beef fat specifically just doesn't match. So it's really the best the vehicle for delivering uh, and coating your mouth with the seasoning. It just works better than any others. Having said that, beef fat absolutely will work. I don't bind it just about as well together. So, I mean, you definitely can use it, just pork's a little bit better. Um, and then Chad says, it looks like I'm sweating a little bit and he's probably not wrong. <laughs> I was running all around. Plus the nervousness of me messing up the audio before, that definitely kicks in. Some of it, as soon as I took a bite out of the hot honey. It's hot. I, I could feel a little bit of sweat on the top of it's my head. It's got some heat to it. There's no question about that. It gets hot. Uh, then Peter's saying he's got a question. Started making jerky and work interfered with him completing it. Uh, added seasoning and cure. It had to sit for four days. Is it ruined? The meat doesn't smell sour. So it sounds like when you're saying you let it sit, you let it sit in a fridge. Assuming that, no, it's not ruined. Um, 
is it going to be perfect? No, it's probably not going to be the best batch of jerky you ever made. But if that was my jerky sitting in a fridge, I wouldn't throw it out. I'd still go ahead and do it. I would say that it's probably even a little bit more important than normal that you get it up to 160 degrees before you totally dehydrate it. You need some water available to help kill off any bacteria or other microorganisms in there. So just make sure you get it to 160 degrees before you dehydrate it and you should be good. Uh, I'm trying to think of what you might run into. I don't think it'll be any more brittle than normal, any more dry. Uh, your cure is probably still perfectly active, but again, you're going to dehydrate that so much that you shouldn't have any problems. Should be good. Yeah. Using honey for curing pork bellies. I mean, I suppose you could add it to a, a cure, but that's definitely how I would approach it. I'd add it to the cure. I wouldn't go ahead and try and create a cure around honey. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, you got to calculate parts per million of ingoing nitrites to it. Uh, you'd have to try and calculate the salt content, all that. So I just go ahead and if you want to try it, take something like the uh, Excalibur uh, Blue Ribbon Maple Bacon for ham and just try adding some honey to that. Is the hot honey dip best with beef, pork, or chicken? Did you try it with uh, just straight any meat? No. No? Unfortunately, we can't answer that one then. I would guess it'd be best with pork, but good with all. I think, I, I, honestly, I can't think of anything that that wouldn't be good on. I looked for some of that, what would you say, baklava? Yeah. And I tried to buy some baklava, but uh, Dylan's had no idea what I was talking about. Really? They didn't have any in the well, bakery section? No. Well, oh, dang. Well, I didn't ask the bakers. I just asked a regular employee. Probably should ask Do you know bakers. what it is? It's like a, a real airy yeah, kind like of like pastry a, type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I know what it is. That would have been actually amazing with this, but a little disappointed. A little <laughs> disappointed now. Well, I've already messed up the auto or audio. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointed Austin, I'm off to a, a banging start. So, new to smoking, using a stick burner. Uh, so, for cold smoking, that's what I used for this. Basically, it's the Flip Professional Smoke Box. It's just a little box for about eight inches by four and, and four. Put a little fire starter over it, load it up with chips, and I mean, I cold smoke everything with something like that. I just use our PK or the Weston 30 inch vertical that we have. I just use that as the container. I go, I put it on our back deck, open the top vent a little bit to begin with, the side vents just a little tiny bit. As soon as it starts going real nice, I tamper down that top vent so it's just barely open because you want all the smoke to stay inside of it. And yeah, it works really well. As far as adding smoke while you're cooking, I've never used one of those. What are the best spices for wild game? Gail, if you can let us know kind of what you're looking for. Are you, are you doing like a, a venison roast? Are you making jerky? Are you making snack sticks? Um, what are you doing specifically? And we can give you some, some better guidance, but in general, um, just to kind of start out with, if you're doing, if you're doing like a roast, um, we have what we call wild game seasoning, comes in like a six ounce shaker. Um, it's really good on wild game. John's weird and he eats it on apples. Um, so it's just Granny Smith. It's, it's phenomenal on Granny Smith. Apples. It's good on other stuff too, but it it's is. great on wild game. Um, if you're making like a further, further processed product like snack sticks, yeah. on wild game I like to do something that has um, a stronger flavor to it. Something like habanero barbecue would be yep. really good. Lime. Um, yeah, habanero Hob lime. lime would be really good. Um, something that just is one of our, what I'd say, more unique flavors. Um, I think they pair very well yeah. with, with any type of wild game. And for the snack sticks, uh, or if you were making jerky, you could use either one of those. Um, the Gigawatt would also be really good. I mean, it's seriously hot, but it would be really good. Uh, if you're looking for like back straps and stuff like that, instead of making a jerky or a snack stick, the Paws Black Bull is just awesome with venison. I did that two months ago, a month ago, something like that. And then I rubbed the outside with the wild game seasoning. It was incredible. Uh, so one of the big advantages of that is it's got phosphates in it. And I know we say this all the time, 
But what phosphates are gonna help you do is increase the water holding capacity of your meat. And it does that by changing the pH level. So it actually chemically alters it and lets it bind with the meat better. So as it's cooking, the meat or the water's not as it by or as whatever available just to cook out of it. So it stays up in there. You end up getting a much juicier product. And that's obviously especially important in like elk, deer, any really low fat category or really low fat type of meat. So. Uh, clarify a little bit. Uh, deer, goose, or duck. I've never done anything with duck. Um, goose, um, one of the, I hear, I probably hear more people making brats out of goose than anything else. Sticks. Some, some people doing jerky. I don't, I don't hear as much about sticks, but I hear a lot about brats. Uh, our old showroom manager, Joel, used to make goose sticks. They were good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So definitely it can be done. I mean, you can make really anything out of anything as long as you just dial in your fat content correctly. It'll, it'll all work. Uh, D Jinx, the seasoning we were talking about with the back straps, that's our Paws Black Bowl seasoning. Um, it's awesome. Just it's search for Black Bowl at waltonsinc.com and that will pop it up. There's two there's a soluble and a marinade. So if you're going to inject it like I did with that back strap, make sure you get the soluble. The other ones, I mean, you can suspend it and inject it, but it's going to clog your injector a little bit. Um, and I can't describe Paws Black Bowl. It's not like it's sweet or it's got heat. The best that I'd ever heard it described was our old customer service manager, Ashley, used to say it just makes meat taste more like meat. And that's really what it does. Uh, it's got, you can definitely tell it's got some brown sugar in it, because if you smoke something after, it does caramelize up on the outside. But yeah, as far as injectables go, that's got to be my favorite. I think yours is probably the roast beef pump. Oh, uh, the roast beef, beef pump is just good on everything as kind of a base. Okay. Um, I'll use that if I'm rubbing the outside of something. Um, the Paws Black Bowl I think is is good in and of itself. I don't, I'm not going to use another topical on it because like you were saying it does kind of caramelize on the yeah. outside but if I'm going to inject anything it doesn't matter if it's poultry, um, beef, pork, wild game. Um, our butter flavored seasoning and marinade is, is fantastic but it's more of a butter and salt type of flavor yeah and then I, I'll take one of our seasoning shakers um, like signature pork or something like that and then rub the, the outside of whatever yeah. I'm doing um, so I usually use that when I'm going with a split flavor type of deal okay I could also argue though that even on something like roast beef I like Paul or pause better so it's better sometimes wow. it is good so Kathy says you tried making your own sausage and couldn't get the fat content any suggestions a uh, couple things. Uh, one, there's a uh, couple articles on Meatgistics on how to make sausage. I'd follow that. Like if you're making bratwurst, there's one specifically for bratwurst. If you're making breakfast sausage, there's one specifically for that. We do talk about the fat content in there. Um, so if you're using, if it's like an all pork product, just use a pork butt. That's got just about the right amount, somewhere in that 70 to 80% lean, 30 to 20% fat. And that's what you're shooting for. Uh, so that's the easiest way to do it. It's all together. It's all there already. You're just buying one hunk of meat. If you're making it out of something like deer or elk that's lean already, we'd recommend you add pork fat. So if you do that, just add 20% its weight in fat. If you can't find the pork fat, then another option is just to buy untrimmed pork butts and do like a 50-50 or if you want something with a little bit less fat content, you can do still that like 70% venison, 30% pork butt. It's just gonna be a little lighter than we would normally recommend uh, on the fat. A couple things you also can do, uh, you can add a binder, like Excalibur Sure Gel, or a uh, carrot fiber. So the binder is gonna add more protein, it's gonna help with protein extraction, help everything bind together really well. The carrot fiber is going to help with uh, water holding capacity. So carrot fiber in itself holds up to 26 times its weight in water. So if you add one ounce of carrot fiber, you could add 26 ounces of water and it would actually just like bind that up and it'd create this really thick paste. Now, I don't recommend you use 26 times its weight. Um, still use your regular water content, but that'll also help just keep everything together and give it like a, a moister feeling. So I'm wondering when you say that, you couldn't get it right. Was it too dry? I'm, I'm assuming, so let us know. 
Um, there was a casing question. Peter, when I smoke sausage, the natural casings get tough. Will collagen casings help with that? Um, it can. Um, collagen casings are all different thicknesses, um, and they're gonna. Some are gonna be tougher than others. If you don't like um, a tough casing, um, collagen should be easier to bite than natural. Yeah. Um, but it maybe also still depends on which ones you use. Um, the fresh collagen casings, they're not meant for hanging while you're smoking, but if you really want to get the lightest bite out of a sausage as you can, um, you could use the, co the fresh collagen casings. It's just when you go to smoke them, you're going to have to lay them on racks instead of hanging them over smoke sticks. Um, then there's also clear and there's smoke. Um, the smoke are going to be the heaviest wall weight out of all the casings, um, and the clear is um, between the fresh and the smoke. Um, so if you don't like the naturals, um, give collagen a try and just depends on, do you want to hang? If you want to hang while you're smoking, use the smoke or the clear. If you're okay with laying sausage on racks to cook, um, go for the t most tender bite you can and use the, the uh, fresh collagen casings. Uh, another option is you use cellulose casings. So it's uh, made out of like a, a plant-based material. It's, you gotta peel it at the end, but it really does, it sort of give you a skinless product, but for a hot dog, it's excellent. Only problem with that is you do have to like tie in between each one. Um, it's just not going to stay twisted. So when you go to smoke it at all, come yeah. undone. Yeah, they're uh, they're made to be twist linked by a a commercial vacuum stuffer that is like a V mag. Yeah, like yeah. eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> um, so when you try to hand twist them, they they don't. It hold, doesn't work um, near as well. They still work great. It just takes a little more effort to yep. to get them to be perfect. And then once you smoke them, when you take them out, if you put them in an ice bath or something, you literally can just squeeze on one end of the casing, and the hot dog will shoot right out the other end. Then. Just before that, we had another question. Was the best edible casing to use for hot dogs? Um, probably our 23 millimeter clear. Um, that's what I would go with. Some people will do naturals on hot dogs. Um, if I'm not using cellulose, I'm probably going to use a 23 millimeter clear. That would be my preference. Yeah. I don't know. You yeah, a different no. one? That's 23, 26. Um, Ron's saying he needs a good prime rib rub. Uh, well, we've actually got two. We've got prime rib rub and prime rib rub with no MSG. Get the MSG version. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is no doubt um, the MSG version has more flavor to it. So if you're not sensitive to MSG, which like 97% of people are not, or even higher than that, I'd go with the MSG version. What I really like doing with that is just get a bunch of ground beef. I cook it up with a ton of that stuff in it, and the rest of it's like the perfect au jus sauce. I love that stuff. It is so good. So yeah, I, I really highly recommend our prime rib rub. Like he said, if you can get the MSG, uh, get that one. That's like my, you're very skeptical of gluten, like people who have sensitivities to gluten. MSG is mine. Like someone's like, oh, MSG gives me a headache. I'm like, you're not that one person out of a thousand that that happens to. So. Yeah. Or are you skeptical of that too? You're probably just skeptical. I, I, I don't know the best way to answer that. Um, there's, there's more, I think there's more science behind it um, that is, more than we can probably go into now. It, we would be best off getting like one of the doctors from uh, um, one of the meat extension offices from right. one of the state universities to talk about that. I don't think I should <laughs> go into too much detail. Um, which slicer works best to cut bacon slices and brisket slices? Um, we haven't, haven't used it for brisket or bacon yet, but as big as our new 12 inch slicer is, as soon as we get some extra time here um, and we get a bacon and brisket, we're yeah. gonna have to try it because it should work fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so big, most of the small home slicers, if you get it uh, down as small as like the seven inch slicers, you can't fit a big cut of meat no, you on the tray like half, that. You gotta though. cut them in half, yeah. yeah. The 12 inch slicer, it ought to be able to fit yeah. a, a full bacon, a full brisket. Mm, full bacon. I mean, it's all going to somewhat depend on the size of your belly. I mean, they can range, you know, to here. So you're not going to get an 18 inch wide belly on there. That's not going to happen. But a normal size, yeah, you should be able to. A brisket, yeah, you should be able to do. A ham, you should be able to do. That thing's got weights. One of my biggest complaints about any model really is keeping the meat down against or on the carriage down against the blade. 
there's a weight on this that pushes it down that's just, we'll show you later. I, I, I can't say how happy I am with that thing. It was tearing through meat the other day. Uh, zip tie between the hot dog links. Yep. Um, have you, have you nope. tried that? Somebody recommended it though. I looked it up, people do it. It definitely will work. My only concern with that is- The plastic? It, it, the plastic, yeah. Is it rated to be? And technically <sighs> it's a, while it's a non-edible casing, it's permeable. So, I don't know, but yeah, people do it. Can you get high temp cable ties? Like, can you get food safety cable ties? Maybe. What about just regular twist ties? Like the blue ones we sell? Blue Maybe. Just yeah, it's just it's just metal and paper. Right. I mean, for all intents and purposes, that might be safe. The only the only downside to that is they've got food coloring in them. Um, but I would think that that yeah. would be fine. Should be all right. Yeah, unless you're gonna catch anything. It'd on probably fire. be cheaper than than. It definitely zip be cheaper than zip ties. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to try it. Maybe, Maybe we try. Uh, also, uh, Park Cider. That way that he uses our um, cellulose casings and he does the horseshoe or whatever you want to call it like Dylan does. Oh, and yeah. He just runs through it like that. Yeah. So. I, I, someday I'm going to have to sit down and actually learn how to do that like professionally. Yeah. So I can just, while we're making stuff, just have twist, 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 twist. Yeah, it's, be done. it's too much. Um, that's why we have a manual linker back here. Um, that's what I would use. Now the downside is our, our manual linkers, um, they're manual, but it's still kind of automatic. It's not. It's just not automatic because it's not electric. But you you crank a, a handle on it and pull the sausage through. Crank, pull. Um, they work great. Yeah. They're awesome. Um, problem is they're not cheap. Um, they're four or five hundred bucks. Um, but if you've got the money to invest in one of those, that for making sausage at home, I think that's the easiest, fastest way to do it. And did we but, get the? The bigger one now? Yeah, and so, we just got bigger ones in. Yeah, the, my o only real complaint on the old one is you couldn't get a, a larger diameter sausage through it. Uh, so, I mean, if a lot of the things you want to tie up often are larger sizes, but we just ordered a different, well, it's the same model, it's just got a bigger opening in it. Uh, so now you can use kibasa, anything through it. So. Yeah, mo most twist linkers like that out there are 32 millimeter, and that's what we started with, but yeah. now uh, we bumped it up to a 42 millimeter. Um, so it'll fit just about anything you make. Um, and it's still, even though it's bigger, we've got some guys that do like snack sticks with them it, or even hot dogs, small diameter things. It still works great yep. on small diameter sausage as well. Uh, so Monique was asking a while ago what we're having for Christmas dinner. Uh, so I'm going up to my sister's in Kansas City. So I'm pretty sure we'll have a filet. That's what she usually does. So you? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, you, Christmas ham, you guys don't do anything like that, right? Like we never did. Uh -uh. Um, not, nothing set in stone normally. Okay. Um, it probably depends on where we're going to be for lunch and uh, whose house. Are we with parents, grandparents? Um, I don't know. Um, we'll see. It's pro most holidays, at least for the Walton household, um, there's not necessarily just a meal. <laughs> It's <laughs> like, here's a whole table of food and we just eat all day. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I can, uh, I can imagine family meals, like big holiday meals at your house being fairly epic. Yeah. Because like, you you're a good Christmas? cook. Dylan's a good cook. <laughs> I've been trying to get invited to Christmas <laughs> to your family forever. I mean, they're all good cooks and they all like smoking, like cooking. So I, I can imagine there's some good food that goes on there. All right, real quick, let's see. Have you checked how many entries we have in the giveaway? Nope. Okay. Let's see how many we have, and we'll go ahead and unbox this. So we've got only <laughs> what? Uh, Nick Hall, LOL, Austin's eating Pizza Hut. Um, <laughs> yeah, if I, ha if I had a choice, I probably would eat pizza for Christmas dinner, but I don't think that I'm going to get a second from anyone on right. that. So I'm going to start unboxing this. I'm going to turn my audio off as I'm doing it. Oh, I guess we didn't actually tell anybody on entering the giveaway. Um, if, uh, um, if you are not on the waltonsinc.com site itself, if you're watching us on YouTube, you need to go over to waltonsinc.com slash live at uh, the waltonsinc.com slash live page. We are streaming the live stream there from YouTube and just to the right of it has the giveaway widget. Um, and if you're on mobile, it'll actually be just below the video. 
Um, but if you're at waltonsinc.com slash live, you can watch the video, you can leave comments for us um, in the chat, and you can enter the giveaway all from one spot. Uh, we're gonna clear this stuff off for one more time with Maple Street Honey for anyone looking for it. Can I actually say? Yeah, I probably should just take that all off. All right, so that is the carriage. We're going to be a little noisy here for a minute as we're getting this set up. And this is the food guard? Probably yeah. Food guard. All right, and no instructions. <laughs> Normally, uh, you you should read the instructions for something before using it, but if you're like John, you just throw them away and wing it. Hope for the best. And this is the actual one that we're gonna give away. Um, so we're gonna slice some stuff up onto it today. I will clean it extremely well. We're also gonna do something that I would recommend nobody do. We're going to go ahead and slice it without cleaning it first. So there'll be some machine oils on this, but I'm okay eating that stuff. I don't care. It's fine. But yeah, no, generally when you get something like this, you absolutely should take everything apart and clean it before using it. All right. So when we look at this real quickly, we've got a good size to it. It's not too big. This would easily fit in a pantry, right? Mm -hmm. No problems with that. We've got the ability to go from zero to 13, I'm assuming. About three quarters of an inch or so. You think? Um, I can check for sure. I guess closer to a half. In fact, I know it's closer to a half. Might as well. Maybe we should get a tape measure. I think got one right over there. Look at that. Ask and ye shall receive. I gotta get a screwdriver, I'll be right back. Nope, there we go. There we go. Didn't need a screwdriver. There's no actual half inch marking. That looks like half inch. Yeah, it is. So I would be wrong. Yeah. It might be a tad over half inch, it might be like 0.55. I know a lot of slicers um, are technically a little bit bigger than that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the official spec is probably 0.55 inches. All right, and we've got a um, couple of things to slice up. I've got some salamis, or some pepperonis, some summer sausages, and then I went out and bought some a hunk of American cheese, too. So we'll see if this one will slice up some cheese. Another really nice feature of these is, you're not really gonna be able to see it, but this right here is gonna go ahead and brace your carriage. So as you're going with economy or home style slicers, often what happens is you start out at like a four millimeter well, by the time you're done slicing, you're at a six because it's pushing this carriage back. This actually supports the carriage and just prevents it from going any further back. So you start at a four, you, you end up at a four. It's a nice thing. Then it's got, on the handle, it's got these spikes to dig into your meat. Or if you want to push it down from the top, it's also got, they're not really spikes, they're more just like bracers or whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, and the other thing is I put meat in the freezer for when we slice it up. It's probably frozen. <laughs> Ridiculously well, we can see solid if it'll now. slice frozen, frozen uh, meat. Patrick, could you run to the, the blast freezer over there? It'd just be in a, a bag. All right. So let's see. How thin do we want to try first? Uh, it's down the end of that hallway. Sorry, guys. All right. And another thing is we've got a nice uh, shielded, plastic shielded on and off button that'll make cleanup a lot easier. Uh, for this, I'm going to turn my mic off again. I'm going to be close to it. No, that slice is pretty good. Doesn't look bad. So that's at a two and a half. Um, so you can see that's maybe a little bit thicker than what you get from like a or craft singles. Let's see if we can get down there. So I'm taking it down to a two. Yeah. Cut that. Very nice. No problem. Do we want to keep going? How low can you go? Sure. Oh. Yeah. See if you can cut it paper thin. Go down to a one. I got that, no problem, too. Now, on something like cheese, I, is, is it acceptable to cut it at the full half-inch slice? Because that's how thick I want my cheese, <laughs> it though. It is not. <laughs> that's not okay. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, we'll, we'll let that defrost a little bit <laughs> before we try and cut that. But yeah, so cheese, absolutely no problem cutting extremely thin on. And we'll save some of the rest of that, and we'll try it out on the big slicer, too. Let's try some pepperonis. I mean, chews through pepperonis pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Do they still taste good? They still taste good. Mm -hmm. mm, that is good. John, you officially just cut the cheese. <laughs> that's that's from Nick Hall. Um, we we got a question about making snack sticks. Um, Looks like Ekamore. Uh seemed like he had a major stall after increasing to 170 degrees. What should normal cook time be once stepping up to 170 to reach 160 on the internal? Um, what do we recommend for our cook? Um, let me pull up our actual recipe here. Um, but as I do, it depends on what your smoker environment is as to how long it's gonna take um, to, to get to that final temperature. Um, if you don't have very mu much humidity, which a lot of smokers, um, no matter what style or brand, or even if you're doing an oven at home, whatever you're using to cook at home, um, you don't have humidity control. So if the humidity gets low, it's going to take it longer to reach there. Um, so one of the things that we always suggest doing, if you can, is add a pan of water into your smoker, your oven, whatever you're cooking on your grill. Um, it doesn't help like a huge amount, but it does make a difference. It helps keep the humidity up. When there's higher humidity, your product will cook faster. Yeah, I would disagree. I would say it it does help a huge amount. Um, if you're just adding the pan of water, is that that's what you were saying? So yeah. yes, just adding a pan of water is only going to give you I don't know five percent more humidity, if that. But even that's just a little bit better. It's something super simple you can do. Now, if you do have a smoker that controls your humidity and you can set your relative humidity to like 70%, you're going to cook in a third of the time. I mean, it's just so much faster that way because it's preventing any type of evaporation energy. And just think about how much hotter it feels out when it's, I thought you ate my creation nope. there. Just think about how much hotter it feels out when like humidity is real high. It's the same basic thing in your, in your smoker. I'm 
plug while we'll I eat this one. Um. Do we have enough ingredients to make a pizza? Kathy's saying, let's make a pizza. Oh. We do have a little toaster oven. We, we do. We cut up the, the baguette and make little mini pizzas. What would we do for, so oh, the sriracha, mm -hmm. like Allie did that one time. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Um, and speaking of pizza, on Meatgistics, there was a user recently who did a great post on pizza he made. Uh, he used our Supreme Pizza bratwurst seasoning, made bratwurst, and then just made a real, like, art. I mean, it was gorgeous. A uh, foodie type pizza. So if you go to uh, Meatgistics and search pizza, his post will come up. It's definitely worth looking at. Um, Andrew um, had a comment about uh, propane burning dry. So you really need a water pan with that. Um, another thing I forgot there um, that we do when we cook a lot of our stuff here, um, most of the things we cook in the video room here, we cook on our, our PK100. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom, the, on top of the heating element, we can put um, a stainless steel pan that we put um, just little tiny wood chips, sawdust. Um, it's really sawdust, not wood chips. Um, but we soak the sawdust. So as the, the heating element is heating up, it's heating up um, that little pan that's full of soaked sawdust. Um, so we're not only getting smoke, but it's also then evaporating all that, adding some humidity. Um, into the smoker that can help as well. If you guys have something that is similar, um, if you and you can soak your wood chips, um, sawdust, wood chunks, whatever, that can help add some humidity as well. You might try that if you're looking for um, something along those lines. Yeah, there was a uh, somebody on Meatistics recently posted, well not recently, a couple months ago, posted a link to another article that <coughs> was arguing that was saying that whether you soak them or not, it doesn't make a difference. I read it, it made sense, but I don't trust it. I don't. It's one of those things where common sense tells you something's right, so. I don't know if it'll make a difference on the smoke or not. Um, I haven't. It's got to. Try. I, I think it should, but on the other hand, I don't really have anything to back that up. Right. But I think it will. I mean, you're adding water that's evaporating. You are increasing your, your your humidity doing it, so it at least would help from that aspect, but the smoke part, yeah, don't know for sure. All right. Duck prosciutto from a long time ago. I wanted to come back to that. Ooh. Anything prosciutto sounds amazing. Problem is, to make correctly, it takes nine months, and I, I can't do that. No. When Dylan dry aged, he bought a couple primals, was dry aging those. I was staring at them through the glass for 20 minutes a day, just drooling. There's no way I'm going to be able to let a ham hang in there for nine months. I'm going to do something stupid and cut it open, and eat or open it up and cut little pieces off of it. So, I mean, I'd love to try it, but way too long. Yeah, grilled pizza. Um, that was how the entire Willow Barbecue kicked off, right? It was Austin did Was uh, that the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was. That was back when I still did all the videos and... Uh, They've gotten a lot better since then. John didn't. I don't know. <laughs> the, how do you top smoked pizza? No, that's a hard one. I think that's probably the best video we've ever made. You took all the, the good options there. Yeah. And so I'm left with things like squid and octopus. So. Yeah. You, you, you still drag me in on those and make <laughs> me eat those, so it is what it is there. And I notice we still have not done calf rides. Yeah. <laughs> I. I I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that either. We we can someday, maybe. Someday. One of the other things with pizza we never did, which um, the only reason we really stopped doing these videos was because everyone said they really didn't have as much of interest in them. But hopefully we can garner some more interest because I enjoyed them. But our competition videos. Yeah. When we would cook. Yeah, we had a good time. John and I would cook and have the. 40 some people around here um, taste everything and vote and see who made the better product. Um, we both had to make the same thing. We would just do different processes, different seasoning, but we were going to have a pizza competition. 
Um, if we bring the competitions back, that's definitely it's, one. It's got to be one of the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another problem with that, though, is the, the people that we work with have terrible taste, and they kept voting for your stuff. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I am pretty sure that it was like four to two or something. Three to one? Okay. I was ahead by two, but I am a better cook than John. I'll say that. Well, that's just not, it's not possible. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I'm missing what Jay McDonald said earlier, but we did do one on jackfruit. Um, it was really interesting. Out of everything we did, that was maybe the, the most interesting without being gross. Yeah. Like snails, squid, barbecue were really, well, they were good, um, but they were kind of gross. The jackfruit was just out there. I was, I, I was not actually thinking that was going to be like bad. Mm -hmm. Like some of the ones we've done, I'm like, this is just going to taste horrible. Right. That one, I just didn't think it was going to truly turn out as good as it did, mm -hmm. but it turned out amazing. It was really good. Plus, it's just really cool looking. Like, if you have a little local, and I say this all the time, our Asian supermarket around here, this is where I get, like, all the stuff that, you know, you can't find at Dillon's or Kroger's. Um, it's a cool looking thing to just go pick up and see what you can do with. Just be really careful, because that stuff's got, like, a, I don't know if it's a sap or something, but once it gets on something, ugh, it takes forever to get it off. Smoked donuts we did. So I don't know if you're going through ones we've done, or what's going on in the comments there. But smoked donuts we did, which were unbelievably good. Uh -huh. Those were insane. Um, so, okay, so smoked shepherd pie. So you're just supposed to be saying things that we should do. What is smoked shepherd's pie? Well, shepherd's pie is the meat inside the, the pie. Okay. So you've never had a shepherd's pie? No, I've never had a shepherd's hmm. pie. We could do it. Why don't I have a pecan pie? Jenny said she was going to make me a pecan pie. Yeah, I know. Uh, we talked about that that last few days, and hmm. uh, we decided against it because it's kind of busy. Uh, oh, what? Does she have other things going on? Yeah, she does. <laughs> but uh, it, it'll happen. We'll get, a, we'll get a pecan pie and do that one. So Shane's asking either the Weston 12 or the uh, 750 watt or the other Weston number 12. Uh, so I assume you're saying either the 750 watt or the Butcher or the Pro. Out of all of what I would consider to be the entry level grinders, which would be like kind of the ones that don't have a, a designation, my favorite would be, uh, what's the largest black? Is it eight, right? It's a number eight. So the black number eight is a great grinder, but probably my favorite would be the 750 watt number 12, which is the one you're talking about. Now you put that up against either the number 12 Pro or the number 12 Butcher, and the the Butcher or the Pro is just a better grinder. Yeah. If you can, if you can afford it, do the Butcher series or the Pro series. You won't, you will not be disappointed. Um, one of the biggest things for me is it's quieter yeah. than the 750 watt number 12. That one, it's a good grinder. It does a good job, but it's very noisy. Very. Um, you pay a little bit extra money for the Butcher or Pro series. But what you pay, um, you definitely get in additional features and quality. Um, it's a lot nicer to use, a lot quieter. Um, but if um, you settle on just the 750 watt number 12, um, it'll still grind fine. Mm -hmm. But go with the Butcher or Pro Series if you can afford it. The number 12 Butcher Series is what I've used to make 90% of what we make back here. And we do have a new addition to our ridiculous list of grinders back here that I was able to sneak through. So uh, in upcoming videos, you'll see me using a new piece of equipment that I'm really happy about. So. I shouldn't give John new toys, but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that, sometimes we do, or a lot of times we do. They have to do something to keep me pleased back here. I shall become very difficult to work with. <laughs> Grilled okra. Huh. Grilled okra couldn't be bad, but in my mind, if you're going to eat okra, it has to be deep fried. Deep fried okra That's, yeah. is I the best. I wouldn't disagree with that. Okay, so yeah, you're saying the Butcher Series is the one you were looking at. Yeah, if, if the price difference between them doesn't put you off too much, go with the Butcher Series. They're great little grinders. Another thing, and I don't know if you covered it with the 750 watt, you're only supposed to run it for like five minutes at a time, and then you have to let it cool in between. Um, that's just because it doesn't have the 
it's got more plastic parts in it than the Butcher Series. Butcher Series, you can run and run and run and run. So yeah, I'd go with that. I think you're going to be happier in the long run. Smoked pasty would be awesome. Pastry, I'm assuming. Smoked pasty. Well, it's got to be pastry. Yeah, it's got to be pastry. Because the only thing if, if we would have had from. if we would have had baklava with the smoked honey, <laughs> oh, that'd have been our pastry. Couldn't find it. Uh, so have we done? Pete's asking if we've cured any Italian meats like prosciutto videos. We haven't, Pete. Um, it's something we're gonna be getting more into. We do have a dry curing chamber now. Um, basically, what we've been waiting for is the time for me to sit down and really just understand the science behind everything before we start doing videos on it because it probably isn't going to help anyone out if I'm just doing videos without knowing what I'm talking about. Uh, so we'll be getting into that into later uh, later videos, specifically on the Meat Justics University stuff. Um, and we are starting to see, if you guys have been watching, you've seen the most recent 2.0 come out, which was uh, the grind, or I'm sorry, the equipment for the injector. Uh, we've got one coming out in additives that should be out in a couple weeks for deer and wild game rents. Uh, we think that one will be really helpful. We'll have some cool visuals for that, hopefully. Um, but yeah, no, we'll, we will get there later down the line with the dry curing stuff. Mm. Andrew says pasty is a real thing. Oh, okay. Uh, it's from Michigan, so meat pie. If it if it's meat it's related, pasty. I think we have to do it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we could try it. And Aud mm. <laughs> Audrey caught what I was saying with the the pasty was making me laugh. Kathy talking about using the manual grinders. Yeah, if you <sighs> are one of the people that are still out there using either a manual grinder or a KitchenAid for a grinder, um, I don't know how to More strongly to, emphasize yeah, yeah, it but enough, but get a new grinder. It will be night and day difference on how your product comes out. Um, on a, on a manual grinder or even the KitchenAids, they will grind meat. It'll take it from a chunk and make it into little bitty pieces, um, but it smears the heck out of it. Um, it does not do your end product um, any good to grind like that. Um, you'll still be able to make a, a fine end product, but it won't be like what you could make if you had like a uh, number 12 Pro Series. Um, it's night and day difference on what kind of quality ground product you can get out of one of the new grinders. And if you want to look at the difference between a manual grinder or a KitchenAid, um, even the little tiny number five Weston electric grinder is going to give you a much better finished product. It's just mm -hmm. way more of a powerful motor behind it, designed to do that. I mean, that's, you're going to like it a lot better. But yeah, she is to think we all used to use the manual grinders, right? So yeah. at least you, you know what you were going through and now you know how much better it is. It's like going from, uh, if you live in the north, it's like going from shoveling your driveway to snow blowing it. Just both get it done, one gets it done a lot better, a lot faster. All right, I wanna play with the 12 inch. <laughs> the 12 inch? I'm gonna bring that up. Okay. I'm gonna keep eating stuff that's out here while it's here. I at least have the decency to cover up my microphone or take it off when I'm eating. I'm chewing softly. Oh, and for whoever wins this, I'm gonna put a meat just stick st signature or sticker on it. And we're gonna sign it. <laughs> yeah, last time on the stuffer, somebody asked us to sign the stuffer uh, before we sent it out. I don't think we did. We probably we probably should have asked whoever won. Hey, do you do you want a signed no, this sausage is stuffer? No, part of it. You have to. Well, we can't cover the Waltons. Can you no. go? I can go on the side. Well, right can here. you go here? It'll be next to the Waltons then. Oh, I did a horrible job. <laughs> Might need a new one. Um, while, uh, while we've got the Meat Just Stick stickers out, if anybody um, wants a Meat Just Stick sticker, um, we do have them on our website. Um, they cost, I don't know, um, not a whole lot, but um, maybe 70 cents or something. We've got them online for just 49 cents just to basically um, help cover part of the cost on them. Um, we've got a whole big batch of them printed. 
um, a month or two ago now. Um, but if you want a meat just stick sticker, 49 cents to add to your cart, stick it on your piece of equipment, your sausage stuff or grinder, um, share pictures with us on the meat just sticks website and uh, have a little fun with that. Nick, is this the one we suggest for bacon and brisket? Yes. Yeah. This is the biggest home slicer I think you're gonna find. To get anything bigger, anything badder, um, you're gonna be in the commercial realm, um, and that's gonna be the difference of, I don't remember what this one is, I should look up the it's price. It's on sale um, right now for, I think, $4.99, it's usually $5.99. No, I, th I think, I wanna say it's $4.29. Right, right, sorry, $4.29. $4.29. Four ninety nine. The other one right now is three ninety nine. Three ninety nine on sale for two ninety nine. Two ninety nine is the eight point seven inch. So if you yeah. have room for it, and the the difference you're going to get between what this is capable of versus what the eight point seven is, in my mind, is definitely worth a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But the only reason to not, I think, go with the twelve inch over the eight point seven is if you just <clears throat> excuse me, if you just don't have the room. If you have the room the 12 inch, you, you can do so much more with it. Okay, so what you've got here, these two red things on the front are gonna lock your product in. It's gonna push it back up against the carriage so you won't have any moving back and forth. That'll keep it firmly in the back and this heavy weight here is gonna keep it firmly pressed up against the bottom of the carriage. So you're gonna get nice even slices every time. So if we throw some of this cheese in there, and we'll start out. Get that meat out of the way. And there you go, in what, 10 seconds, you've got a quarter pound of cheese. And then, oh, I've got. Yeah, we definitely didn't clean that. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I'm still eating that. Okay. Oh. Oh, don't. But I don't wanna get. Don't do it. We gotta, we should wait on that. Till we clean this? Yeah. Okay. We can't get uh, rid of that. What this is, is this is the rest of that uh, Lebanon bologna I made a while ago that was incredible. And since we didn't clean this, it's got machine oil on it. So it might ruin it. I mean, I still eat machine oil. It, uh, I would not suggest it. <laughs> but I would just I don't want to. <laughs> I would say no. Just, we'll just get some sanitizer and okay. wipe it down real quick. Right, At least clean it. Or sanitize it. That'd be the big thing. Um, big Dave, what kind of pork fat can you use for sausage to bring up the fat content so you don't get dry sausage? Uh, most meat stores all cut box beef nowadays. Uh, what would you ask for at a meat store? Um, I mean, ask for just any type of pork fat. Um, really doesn't matter from what cut in uh, it, the meat that it came from. If, if it's pork fat, it'll be close enough, in my opinion. Um, it will, work. but uh, so you've heard the term top down, right? You know, the term top down. Part of that are, derives from animal fat. So the higher the fat is on the animal, the higher quality it is. So, for example, fat on the top back of the pig is definitely gonna be preferable to the bacon fat, especially when making sausage. In the end, is it gonna make a huge difference? No, but yeah, you wanna look for back fat if you can. Yeah, if he's having trouble getting fat though. Then um, just get fat. Yeah, if you ask your, your local store, just any type of pork fat, it could be trimmings. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> good. Uh, it could be trimmings, it could be um, bacon ends too. I mean, anything that has fat on it, if you can't, um, on some guys, um, when they ask what they can do on fat when they're making some sort of wild game um, and they can't get straight pork fat, uh, my best recommendation there is to go 50% of whatever your lean meat is and 50% pork butt. Um, pork butt's gonna be close to 30% 
and mixing that 50-50 then um, will help a lot. Um, ideally, you get straight pork fat, but if you can't, I'd go with a 50-50 split of your lean meat with just pork butt. Um, Nick Hall says uh, machine oil equals added flavor. There you go. So. I, don't, I don't disagree. All right, so same thing here. Uh, this is not as wide as that block of cheese though. So to adjust that, I'm gonna loosen these, push this up to where it's securing this against the back, tighten it back down, drop this, and we want a little bit on this. Somewhere in that range. I feel like one of these guys from a infomercial, like the Sham Wow guy or something. <laughs> go, you're not gonna get this with a regular slicer, but you're really. I mean, there's not too many home slicers that are gonna do that amount that quickly and that evenly. There's yeah. no wear on that. It doesn't start off thin and then go thick. It's perfect from top to bottom. I love this thing. The the big thing you get, in my opinion, on on some of the higher quality slicers like this versus the small kind of plasticky. Um, kitchen ones, um, when you start up those small ones, you can hear them like churning up and, and getting going. They take a few seconds to actually get spinning. And even then you look at the blade and you're like, I don't know if that's <laughs> gonna cut. It will, it's just very slow. This one, much bigger motor, bigger blade. Um, when it starts up, it's ready to go. There's no winding up, getting ready. Um, you don't have to go slow across it. As fast as you can push the, the um, support back and forth, um, it'll slice. This one's not getting a meat just to stick her, because we're not giving it away. Is that one going to stay in the video room? Oh, yeah. So you get two new toys this week. Oh, yeah. Well, can I have it? Yeah. We'll I feel like I can do yeah, enough we'll, with that. Yeah. We'll, keep, we'll keep one out of stock cool. here. And then it is getting a meat just stick sticker. I'm taking out off the uh, outside of this, because I don't trust your machine oil since you didn't clean it. The center still got hit with the same part of the blade. Yeah, but the outside got touched first. I feel a little safer eating it this way. Whatever it takes, man. Is your mic still off? No, it should be back on. Yeah, I'm on. Why are people saying they can't hear me? Patrick, can you hear us? Did yeah. we measure the thickness on that one? Um, what do you mean by the thickness? Tara's asking if we measured how thick the 12 inch slicer will cut. I would assume it's the same. It's, yeah, I, it's I a haven't half checked inch it. as well. Yep. Okay. And again, uh, 12 inch also has that brace, so it's going to stay exactly where it is. So. Jumping back onto the, the pork fat discussion, uh, Richard's got another um, comment about it's pretty hard to get pork fat now with deer season go going on. And it definitely can be. So if you can't get pork fat, um, kind of as John and I were saying before, um, pork fat is your best option, but if you can't get it, ask for, ask for beef fat. Um, maybe that will be easier to come by. Um, no. It doesn't carry flavor quite as good as pork fat does. Um, I don't think it tastes quite as good, but if it's a question of no fat or some fat, I'd rather go with beef fat. Um, so if you have a hard time getting pork fat, ask one of your local butchers if you can at least get beef fat. Oh, we didn't slice any bread. I could grab it again. Nah, it's okay. Um, if we bring bread back out, then I want to make a pizza in there. <laughs> we might have to. All right, so how many people do we have um, entered so far? 250 entries. Okay. So 
So that's not bad. Why, why did I lose our screen? Nope, there it is. One of the things we did last time in the live streams is, is we, we put some special things on sale for you guys. Um, it is kind of hard to top the 15% off anything and everything going on right now. Um, but if you want to see anything else on sale, let us know and we might be able to put some other items on sale or at least um, have some suggestions from you guys for what to put on sale um, for the rest of December and our New Year's sale, which is coming up. Um, we're going to have a pretty fun New Year's video as well. You're going to get to see some of the bloopers um, and the stupid dumb things we've done through the year. Um, but I do have one um, special sale right now. We just got in um, a whole bunch of different equipment. We were talking about new sausage stuffers and right. slicers. Um, one thing we got a lot in uh, last week was our 50 pound meat mixers. If you are wanting to really step up your game and get something big, um, it's amazing to not ever have to hand crank for mixing. It can get really old. So if you're one of the guys that does a lot, um, we've got our, we just put our 50 pound meat mixers on sale, um, $300 off. So if you want one of those, um, pick one of those up. Um, it'll ship for free as well. And that's a good deal because the things are big. Um, if you typically make 25 to 50 pound batches and you're doing it a lot, um, getting a group of friends together to process all your deer, um, one of those meat mixers really will make your job a whole lot easier. Yeah. You can drink beer while you're making sausage instead of hand cranking. Yes, that's a good way to do it. Now, Nick's asking, would pork belly work in place of pork butts for sausage making? Yeah, it'll work. I mean, it's pork fat. As I was saying earlier though, the old saying, top down, they at least think it started from that. So the higher the fat is on the animal, the better it'll be for sausage making and basically for anything. Uh, it's just a little bit harder. So it's gonna be better if you get a pork butt, but I mean, what, like 2% better? Like very, very small amount. For the normal home person, you really probably won't notice much of a difference, so. Yep, so pork shoulder, I mean, pork butt, basically the same thing. Oh, I'm just, Monique asks, which of you two is the five second rule guy and which one of you is the all just eat it guy? I am the all just eat it guy. Uh, I've spent years building up an iron stomach. I will eat some very questionable <laughs> looking things and I never have a problem, so. Uh, what temp do you run your smoker or grill at? I do 210 degrees so I won't dry out the meat. It depends on what you're making. Um, if it's just like a whole muscle cut, um, doing like a, a pork tenderloin or pork loin, I'll run 200 to 250. Um, but if we're making snack sticks, I'm going to start out at like 120 and I'm going to incrementally bump it up as we're right. going through the process. And my final temp will only get up to about 180. So it depends on if you're making like a cured sausage or if you're doing a whole muscle cut. Um, Lloyd, let us know specifically what product you're making and we can help you out with a cook schedule there. And I'm not sure if it ever got posted, but I saw a question a long time ago about looking for a link for the honey. So I'll just, I'll post that in the comments below. Facebook changed something again. Okay, so that's posted in there. Um, I haven't really seen any suggestions on what people would like to have on sale, have you? Um, number 32 butcher grinder. That one's a hard one yeah. because the only time I can put something like that on sale is when we discount everything. Like today, um, with the Christmas 18 coupon code yeah. for 15% off, that's the only time you're going to get a sale on certain items like that because we're restricted by map pricing. Um, that is 
what we have to stick to. Um, so on a few things like that, um, really the grinders are, are probably the biggest category there. Um, that if you want a butcher series grinder, today's probably the best day to do it. Um, we probably won't see any discount as big as the 15% off of everything um, anytime soon. But shelf life on Apple Brot Mix. Um, it depends on when it was manufactured. Um, all the seasonings have a best buy date on them. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's an expiration date or a true shelf life. It's just when it's best buy. If, you're, if, you, if you buy a pack of Apple Brot seasoning and the best buy date was November of 2018, and so it's technically past the date, you can still use it. It's just gonna be less potent. Um, most seasoning and spices have about 12 to 24 months before they start really degrading enough of, enough in flavor that it's going to affect the outcome of your final product. Right. Um, but for most things, if you buy a pack of seasoning from us, things turn and rotate fast enough that you're going to get about two years of life out of anything. Right in that range. Yeah. yeah. And I know we've said it a couple times on here, but that apple rot is just one that doesn't get enough attention and we should sell more of that especially if you put some high temp cheddar cheese in that stuff that's actually the only brat we have that i think the cheddar is the best cheese to use for it something about the two of them together just it's perfect i love apple brats i could eat them all day long um and then there was a question right below that that i keep missing uh, can i use complete turkey cure on pork loin yeah you can absolutely um the only way you would run into any problems with that is if you were a commercial processor and you were trying to package it as a specific thing. But yeah, for the home user, you can use really anything on anything. Um, I imagine the complete turkey cure on pork line would be really good. Mm -hmm. I think that you're on to something there. I'd try that out. Sounds good. Um, and then I think, stop me if I'm wrong, but the next comment's a vacuum sealer sale. So he's wanting to see vacuum sealers. That's the same basic thing as yeah. Yeah. So today would be that 15% off. That would be today be the day to do it. I just use Christmas 18 when you're checking out. It'll give you 15% off. And I'm pretty sure with any vacuum sealer you bought, that would also be free shipping. Um, some of them. Well, actually today with $50. Right. Yeah. With $50 yeah. limit. Yeah. Everything would be free shipping. I was trying to think of one that'd be 15% off and below 50 bucks. And I don't yeah, think there's, there's any of them. Um, how long does it normally take to get your snack sticks up to 165 using your step temperature schedule? Again, it, it yeah. varies on your smoker. But um, it might take four hours. It might take eight hours. It's going to, for most home smokers, you'll be a lot closer to eight than you would be to four. If it was a, if it was a 21 millimeter, definitely closer to eight. But if you did like a 16 or a 19, um, Maybe. even on a home smoker, you could you get close to four. Uh, meat grinder questions yeah. from Shane. Do you remember um, some stuffers um, come with the little stuffing star adapter? Yeah, the Butcher Series. Does uh, it the come Pro with Series it? definitely does. Yes, the Butcher Series does as well, at least definitely with the 22. Um, so basically, yeah, you take the blade out. There'll be something that looks like a little Y or a peace sign, kind of. You just put that in there in place of your blade and your knife. What it does is it stops the uh, grinder auger from riding on the bottom of the throat and wearing out your throat and your grinder. Um, just lets you stop off it. Now, having said that, any sausage grinder comes with sausage stuffing capabilities. Well, not any, but anyone that does. It has that capability. It's not ideal. Uh, in the long run, if you're going to do a lot of sausage making, do yourself a favor and buy a, a stuffer. It's just you're going to get a better product out of it. It's going to look a lot better. The consistency on it will be a lot better. Um, I did a video where I, I mean, it, you can stop off a grinder. It, it's very possible. It just takes a long time. And you're not going to make anything like a snack stick. Using the prime rib rub, uh, Darren said he just bought some. Um, does he need to coat the meat with olive oil or will it naturally stick to the meat? It'll naturally stick to it. It's salty enough yeah. that you shouldn't need to cake it on with anything else. No. However, I don't. I I personally probably wouldn't use olive oil if I was um, trying to cake seasoning on. I have a feeling that it would 
do different things to the outside of the meat. Um, if I'm trying to cake like extra seasoning on something, yeah. I'll use mustard because right. by the time you cook mustard, um, it, it gets rid of all the flavor. Totally, so, you won't even know it was ever on yeah. there. I, I do that a lot with like smokehouse barbecue because that's a very sugary seasoning. Yeah. So you can put as much of that on there as you want. So I take mustard, just coat like yeah. a pork butt. <laughs> Oh, uh, is the right word. And then just dump as much seasoning on as a hole in the mustard, cakes it all in there. Um, I just I, laugh because you, you, if you're here, Austin does this stuff. I mean, there's a half inch thick coating of mustard on the outside of everything. A normal and then person he just destroys it. He'll use a shaker per cut of meat. Yeah, like a normal person is going to use like half or a third of the shaker. I use the full thing, and then I usually need another one because I, I love seasoning, I love flavor. Um, and salt. And salt. And salt. So, uh, Sue, I don't know if you just started watching, but I've been consistently turning off my mic or covering it while I've been eating, trying to at least be that polite. But no, I've, I'm not capable of having food around me and not eating. I'm that type of person who will continue eating till the food is gone, not when I'm finished being hungry. So. Apple rump rub is fantastic, too. Yeah, that stuff is great. Really... As a line, the apple or the rump rubs might be my favorite out of all the Excalibur shakers. Um, just the whole thing is good. The Texas, mm -hmm. St. Louis, Kansas City, they're all, it's a really good line. Yeah, and it has butter garlic. Which is important. Which is amazing. Which is important. That stuff is incredible. They need a cinnamon toast in the rump rubs. Yeah, we do. Need, we need to try cinnamon toast on meat more because mm -hmm. I really do think that could be awesome. That's one of the ones that I. It, it's so good on other things that aren't meat, but right. every time we've done it on meat is is fantastic. Yeah. I'm gonna try that on maybe a pork loin or something. Uh, Chad, so no, we haven't picked it. Um, we'll definitely pick it sometime here somewhat soon uh, the way we normally do it is we'll announce the winner whenever we're we're done uh, but we'll also in case that person's not here you don't have to be present to win we'll just send you an email um, and let you know like that I'm actually changing the time to end what are you doing on the giveaway um, okay we have it set and go until like January sometime um, that's why term and, terms and conditions say subject to change. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll set it to end at 4.30 here. Okay. Uh, smokehouse seasoning is fantastic on rice. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this stuff's great on anything. So a couple of quick things that I like to use our seasonings for that are way outside its normal use. Uh, one, garlic romano on popcorn is ridiculous. It's just so good. I also love using our uh, salt and vinegar wing shake on cucumbers. It's awesome. It turns cucumbers into kind of like an ant vegetable into my wife and I fight over them. We love them. I also throw that on salads all the time. Ultimate steak and roast and olive oil makes an awesome uh, salad dressing. And obviously wild game on Granny Smith apples. Only Granny Smith apples though. You need like that little bit of sourness to, to fight the wild game seasoning. Everyone here, like I was raving about it when I first started working here. Everyone's like, really, it's that good? So they tried it and they're like, no, it's terrible. So I'm the only one who likes that. But I do think there you guys didn't try them with Granny Smith apples. You tried them with regular apples. Yeah, yeah. that's that's your claim is no, that it we, makes we a big bought difference. the wrong apples. Of course it makes a difference. They taste totally different. What is your use cases for Sherbine cured or fresh sausage? Um, uh, EW Spears, can you rephrase that in some way? So I'm just not understanding what you're asking. Yeah, uh, my wife makes homemade fudge too, um, but if somebody wanted to send in fudge, there's no question it would get tried. Now, Chad, are you talking about actually cooking it? 
on the smoker or at making it and then smoking it? Because I don't know that you'd be able to get it hot enough in the smoker, really. How hot does that to be? I think it would be pretty hot. I, it can always I be just cold do the smoke. mixing at my house. My wife makes fudge. I don't actually do any of the ingredients or anything. Yeah, uh, sorry, by the way, earlier, it, I wasn't able to actually put the link to the honey, uh, so I made a, a shortened link. Um, I'll post it again right here and then say that's for the honey. Try and encourage more people to send us in good stuff. If we get food to try, I'm not gonna turn it down. Yep, we did watermelon. Watermelon was good. It was good. Mm -hmm. The was best fruit was not watermelon, though, in my opinion. Oh, no, it it's pineapple. pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. The pineapple, oh, that was so good. Um, okay, so he's talking about uh, making the fudge, bringing it in, like having it, and then cold smoking it. We could try that. I've got a bunch of fudge sitting at my house right now. We could actually do that, no problem. Smoking chocolate went. Mm -hmm. We smoked candy. That was the biggest surprise to me at everything we did. Because I just thought it was stupid and ridiculous and like, ha, 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 what are we going to do here? And it was awesome. Almost all the candies came. Remember how good those little peach rings were? Oh, my gosh, those yeah. So that good. was amazing. That was the video where we made Allie sit down behind us on the floor. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so she means to say super bind. Okay. <laughs> so I, I so, guess I'm, I'm going to answer is like, why would you use it or when would you use it? Uh, on any cured product, reformed, like a sausage, snack stick, summer sausage, using a super bind, um, sure gel, anything like that's definitely worth it. One, it's gonna increase your final yield. So that's one of the reasons commercial processors like it, because it's an inexpensive way for them to get, you know, three percent more sausage, which is definitely worth it for them. But it also gives you a better consistency and it just makes it a little bit juicier, a little bit more tender, uh, all around. Not making or not using and using, I, I would say 99% of the time, people are going to be able to tell the difference. I mean, it's it's noticeable. Superbind is especially good because what Superbind is is a combination of carrot fiber and potato starch. So you get the water holding capacity capabilities with the carrot fiber, which is 26 times its weight in water. And then the great thing about potato starch for meat processing is it starts to form a gel, which means it's just getting ready to really uh, accept water at the same exact temperature or same approximate temperature minus a degree or two that meat's gonna really start expelling its water. So as soon as the meat starts sweating, the sure gel's there, or I'm sorry, the potato starch is there to really suck it up. So it's a really nice combination of the two. <clears throat> Excuse me, of the two. Nick just ran over a coon, and he's wondering <laughs> if, if we want it. Um, Nick, if, if you send that to 3639 North Comas Harris Street, Wichita, Kansas, address it, attention to John. <laughs> um, let him open it, and then he'll decide once he receives it. Uh, what's the largest diameter stuffing tube that can be used for 21 millimeter casings? Uh, 13. Thir you can't get a 16? No. Right. Um, 13 millimeters. The, uh, that also assumes that um, you're buying casings from Walton's. Um, it is a little deceiving when you see something that says a 21 millimeter. Um, what we sell, what somebody else sells, um, even between the lines of is it 21 millimeter fresh, smoke, clear? they can vary a little bit in size. Um, collagen in that explicit product is uniform, but um, when we say it's 21 millimeter, if you bought a 21 millimeter from somebody else, it might be a 21 and a half, and ours might be a, a 20.8. Um, but for our casings, um, 13 millimeter on the stuffing tube is the biggest one you can use. And that's kind of just a general guideline always go by is use the biggest stuffing yeah. tube you can. Yep. Um, it will make life easier, a whole lot easier when you're Absolutely. stuffing. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it'll stuff more consistently. You'll get a better, oh, 
it's not that it really matters because no one cuts their sausage open, but it'll swirl less on the inside on you. Um, I don't know if it's true if you get less blowouts, but I also always feel like it seems like you do. I don't know if that's true or not. It's just, that's just about how much tension you're holding on it, yeah. and it's just easier to stuff when you have a bigger stuffing so, tube. So yeah, maybe you so you're just it on. you're having to hold it on tighter, yeah. and it's a smaller tube. Um, so I mean, indirectly, yes, maybe. I forgot we had these. Uh, so we also did the uh, roasted peanuts. This is the I believe the hot honey, and that is the regular one. Do I get any of the hot? Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah, that's super good too. Oof. But that's real crunchy. That's probably annoying to listen to us eat. But probably. But really good. So Lloyd is saying he's looking forward to seeing us do a cook-off video. Okay. So we might have to do another poll. Um, if you guys want to see cook-off videos, we probably at least need to get recommendations on what you guys want to see us make and what we do for some of it, because that was, we enjoy the heck out of those videos. They are fun. Um, we just didn't get as many views on them, but if you guys um, would be interested and you guys want to watch, I don't think I'm opposed to cooking food. I'm not, but the first one's pizza. I don't care, because I know I can beat you at that, and I need to narrow the gap a little bit. Okay. Um, so do you prefer chambered or the other type of sealer? Obviously, I'm assuming by the other type of sealer, you just mean a chamberless machine. So they both have their pluses and minuses. The only downside to the chambered machine is that they are more expensive. Once you've made that initial purchase. Size. True, true. Size, yeah. The other ones can fit in almost any cabinet. A chambered machine, you do have to have like its own mm -hmm. space. Um, but other than those two things, once you've made that purchase and you have room for it, is there anything else? No. <laughs> once you've done that, uh, the bags are a lot cheaper for the chambered machine. So depending on how much you vacuum seal, you can make up that money. And I mean like a lot cheaper. It's pennies per bag. And I mean like, like one penny, two pennies per bag for the chambered machines. And it's a lot more expensive for the chamberless machines. The reason for that is the chamberless machines have to have a texture to them on one side. And that's to give it something to be able to suck the air like a friction almost to suck the air out of the bag. Also chamber or chambered machines do a better job. You can do things with more liquid. I mean with the chamberless machines, if you're using liquid on it eventually no matter what, liquid's going to make it up into the little chamber there and it's going to get down into things it's not supposed to. It's just going to happen. Once that happens, I mean your chamber your your machine's got a limited lifetime once it gets water inside of it. Yeah. Uh, it's just the unfortunate truth of it. Also, usually with a chambered machine, there's no cool time in between. You just go, 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 go. So I like them definitely better, but they are significantly more expensive. Yeah. For the best of both worlds, um, have two. I know that sounds bad coming from us that we're trying to we're trying to sell you stuff, but just buy them both. Like in, in all seriousness, um, I would ha I have a hard time convincing my wife to take one of the big chamber sealers home. Right. Um, I would love to have one because they are a lot nicer. We don't have space in the kitchen, um, really, even in the pantry anywhere to put one. Um, but I use one of the little tiny Weston Harvest Guards, and that works great when we're doing like leftovers. Um, we steal a lot of leftovers um, in just that. It works well when you're stealing a few bags at a time, but anytime um, we're doing a lot of something, we end up using like the VP215, mm -hmm. um, one of the chambered sealers like that. So it depends on how much, but when you, when we, we also have some of the extra vacuum machines just sitting around here. So when we have access to them, it makes it super handy and convenient. Um, if you can do it, it's awesome because then you can keep the little one in your kitchen, store it in a drawer, and then you could keep the VP215 or one of the bigger ones out in the garage, right. out in the shed, and just use it on your bigger jobs when you're not just sealing one or two packages. And for some of the, the larger uh, chambered ones, like the VP215 is an oil-based pump, uh, so some people prefer that. It gives you a little bit stronger 
of a suction on it. Um, what's the, the VacMaster, one of their similar sizes is it an air, all air pump. Do you remember the name? So the Pro? Th no, well, um, uh, on the chambered ones, mm -hmm. um, the 112S and the 120 were dry pumps. Um, okay. Those are actually getting redesigned. They'll have new ones out next year. Right now, they're all out of stock. Okay. There's the 210. We've never stocked the 210. Um, no, uh, Weston makes a chambered machine. Oh, which one does Weston do? Yeah, it's like the three. We three. The Weston Pro 2500. 2500. That one is That's a dry a pump. dry pump. That one's a good one. So that one has no maintenance required. Um, with an oil pump, all you have to do is change the oil every like thousand bags or two thousand bags. It's it's in their uh, brochure at some point. Um, so if you don't mind changing the oil, uh, oil pump's nothing to worry about. Huh? If you mix pork fat with ground venison when processing deer, how do you keep it from tasting old? after long-term freezer storage. Uh, honestly, I would say that that probably, more than anything else, is gonna depend on how you store it. Uh, if you're still using butcher or freezer paper, you're really not gonna prevent that. Uh, one of the uses, like when making bacon, uh, bacon taste booster helps fight off rancidity taste in the cooler. So that works for that, but there's not really, like you can't use a bacon taste booster on really anything else to help fight off rancidity. So vacuum seal it, uh, that's gonna be your best bet. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to know, um, Mark, is that old flavor, um, is it while you're vacuum sealing it or, or are you using butcher freezer paper? Because yeah, like John's saying, vacuum sealing is gonna be the best. When you, when you pull one of those packages out, can you see ice crystals inside it? Maybe it lost a seal, um, something went wrong with it, but if it's vacuum sealed and sealed well, I'm not sure what else they can do. Right. Um, Nathan has a good question, and we get this one um, semi-regularly. People wanting to know why we don't do kits. Um, we could do kits. We could say, hey, take this um, casing, this seasoning, here's these additives, and put it all in one package and sell them as that. Um, the problem is there's so many different options. Um, there's multiple types of casings. Are you going to use a fibrous or a non-edible collagen? Um, are you going to what? Are, do you want to use a different size of collagen casings? Um, for us to make one kit, it would really limit what would be available. Versus um, you guys getting to pick and choose. If you're making snack sticks, do you want to do a 19, a 21, a 23? Um, what seasoning you want to do? Do you want to use soy protein blend, carrot fiber, super bind, um, sure gel? Um, there's so many options out there that we don't want to put just a single kit together and limit what's there. Um, I think that's one of the cool things about what we have is we have so many different products, so many different offerings. Mm -hmm. um, we've thought about kits, but we don't get enough requests, I don't think, to actually do it. And even if we did, it would limit on what you guys would be able to do. Um, if enough customers request it, I mean, we could and we may do it someday, but right now we've always looked at it as just not enough people have requested it and doing it would limit, um, kind of limit the options on what could be done with it. Now having said that, would it be possible to create something just through the back end site where everything still lives on its own? Be like a configurable product. Right. It's like, I want to make snack sticks right. and they could choose the seasoning, choose the binder. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe this is more of an offline thing, but we could even go through and just like take one or two seasonings, give it our favorite binder, our favorite size snack stick, casing. Sell it as a bundle, but yeah. not necessarily a kit. Right. Yeah. Do something like that. It'd be like a grouped product. Yeah. Um, yeah. It could be done. Okay, so maybe we'll think about that. That's, I mean, we have had every time we've done one of these, we keep getting that question. So yeah. maybe there's something we need to do. If we did that, then it, it just wouldn't come in like a single cohesive package. Right. You would be able to pick and choose um, from some different options and you would just get all individual products. It wouldn't come in one bundled package, but we could at least do something like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Prairie Wildcat, what are you making that is asking for corn syrup solids? Um, if you can let us know which product you're making, we probably can give you some advice there. Uh, Glenn, uh, right now, honestly, with the Christmas 18, that's a 15% that you could use towards any seasoning. Uh, probably, I mean, occasionally we do put seasonings on sale, seasonings and cures, but they're generally not more than 15% off. So this would be one of the better opportunities to get some seasonings on sale. So. Yep. Uh, George Dolex says, I've semi-freezed the sausage before vacuum sealing. That's absolutely right. I've been in rushes before and just haven't had time to freeze them first and vac seal them. And all of a sudden you've got it coming out both ends of the sausage. And when you go to grill it, it's just not that nice round what you're looking for. It's just all plump or to the side. Uh, yeah, so definitely the right thing to do there. Uh, so saying corn syrup solids, uh, are you asking Dylan as well? Uh, I'm looking for something scientific here. Yeah. Um, it's a sweetener, it's, dextrose is the one that's used mostly as the f food for the starter culture, starter culture. Mm -hmm. it's not that. There is something else. I was just reading in Dylan's stuff the other day with. Uh, Chad, if you're still here, Merry Christmas to you too. So, um, I don't, I'm going to go out on a, li on a limb here. Um, we might see if we can get clarification from Dylan later, but on, on the corn syrup solids, um, I'm not seeing anything. Um, truly scientific here. Um, we, we have a couple of notebooks that we, we, if something sounds like it needs a more in-depth answer, we try to get something better for you guys. But off the top of my head, um, it can work kind of like a binder. Um, I don't know that it's going to be as big on the sweet side to things as it will be for used for binding. Um, oh, I okay. think if that's the case, um, as, as long as, like John said, you're not using a starter culture, um, if you're doing a normal snack stick summer sausage that is kind of like our recipes that are out there on Meat Justics, um, I don't think you need to use the corn syrup solids. Um, but if your recipe is not calling for a binder, I would look at using Sure Gel, um, Carrot Fiber, Super Bind, something else there. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything either. Yeah. Um, here, hey. So I mean, it's not meat binders. I mean, it's it's definitely used for that. I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't know how effective it is at that, but yeah, it's definitely going to give you uh, some sweetness without a question, but yeah, it does also look like it's got a binding capacity. I'm guessing in your formulations, depending on what they are, if you're talking about like a commercial uh, recipe that you are got and you're pumping out to hundreds of people, that's one thing, probably wanna go with exactly what you want, but if it's just a family recipe that's been passed down, you could try switching it out with just regular sugar, you could try dextrose, um, but yeah, uh, if you're just looking for for the sweetener, you can try just any other type of regular sweetener. Old taste has been a problem using freezer paper and meat bags. Meat was not freezer burned. Never had the problem with straight ground venison. It's the fat that causes the old taste. So back from Mark. Meat bags definitely um, a little better than freezer paper, but not as good as vacuum pouches. Um, obviously, it's a little hard to stuff bulk sausage into vacuum pouches. It's a whole lot easier to do in the meat bags, but um, as long as your seal on that is good, um, the, on the, the freezer paper ones, if you can switch from using freezer paper to vacuum pouches, that will help. Yep. Um, 
the meat bags is, like I said, kind of between the two. Better than freezer paper, not as good as vacuum pouches, but um, if he thinks it's the fat that causes the old taste. I don't think he's wrong. I don't think he's wrong. When you think about when you're one. doing like a dry cured or something, when that taste is the fat going rancid, which sounds disgusting, but tastes amazing. Um, so I, I, I bet he's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lloyd says, love the Monday meat hack. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue those. I don't know if we actually got one out this Monday. I don't Thank think we did. We were, more, we were more tied up with this and the, uh, the sales. But yeah, that's definitely going to be something going on in the future. You can thank Allie for that. Um, she's moved on to another company. She abandoned the Waltons, if she's watching. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely keep that going. That seems to be getting good response, and it's definitely a good way to just quickly give you guys a little bit of information. So, I just got a little extra clarification on some of the um, uh, fat flavor okay. stuff. Um, I'll give him credit. Brett just sent me an email. Brett's our CEO and president. Uh, he's watching us right now, but he said um, that you do get a metallic flavor from fat, and that is why are you, why you would use the, like the bacon taste boosters right. to, to fight off that. So, so you can use it in that. But can't. I don't. That I think that's the next question: is how how could you fight that in a fresh product that's not like bacon? Um, we'll have to maybe look. A little more into that, but it sounds like yeah, it is the yeah. fat. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I don't know how you. Yeah, I don't. That might be a good question to get with Dylan on, and honestly, just to try, I just start trying a few different things and seeing if we can't come up with something that'd be helpful to everybody. Uh -huh. Perfect. We got a. The we, buffalo rock. Yeah, we got, <laughs> we got ginger ale waiting for us. We do need to do a Willow Barbecue Moscow, Moscow Mule mules, edition. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Austin and I both love Moscow mules. So, uh, Smoked poblanos, uh, yep, from David as well. That's an interesting one. I mean, lots of people do it, so we definitely we try some interesting seasonings with it. And also Merry Christmas to you. What is a barracha beans? beans? I have no idea. Um, this is why we have Google. Mm, that's just the chili. What are barracha beans? Barracho means drunk, and it refers <laughs> <laughs> to the beer in the cooking liquid. If you're cooking beans and pork roast at the same time, you can use fatty pieces of pork. Um, I, I guess you're cooking them in beer. Yeah. Uh, pinto beans, turning them into uh, drunk beans. Um, something I did last week or two weeks ago that I just wanted to share with everyone that turned out really good. Uh, I took our, uh, what was it? Dill pickle jerky, yeah, dill pickle jerky seasoning, and I made burgers out of it, like patties. They were awesome. I mean, it tasted just like, if you like pickles on your burgers, it tasted like every bite had pickles in it. It was great. Did you put high temp cheese in it? I didn't. Oh my gosh. I can put high temp ghost pepper cheese in it and make it even better. Yes, that's the next step. But anyways, that, that's a great example of using a seasoning for not its intended purpose and getting a great flavor out of it. If you like the flavor of something, don't be afraid to go out and try different things with it. I've cooked chicken in the crock pot with habanero lime, habanero mango, all sorts of different things. Some of them work better than others, uh, but you're very rarely going to be disappointed with the way something turns out if you like the seasoning. So, oh, James is back again. 
I don't know if he, did you just join us, James? I hadn't seen you yet in this. I haven't seen anything from him for a while. Yeah. The bald eagle, always. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're gonna have a ton of Majestic things to answer. We're getting an invite to come to Georgia. I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed. I like Georgia. Preferably not in the summertime, though. Let's go down there in the wintertime, no, like yeah. now. Yeah. One, sweat to death. Two, mosquitoes. Oh, I don't do mosquitoes. And then you're getting into that, like, not my favorite wildlife type of stuff down there. You've got alligators for sure. <laughs> you got all sorts of poisonous snakes. So, I don't know. Do they have sharks? Yeah. Everyone if has sharks. If they have water, they have sharks. Kansas has water. Do they have sharks? I'm sure there's a shark somewhere <laughs> around here. Tell me. Uh. John is convinced oh. that lots of people die by sharks and he won't go anywhere near where there's sharks, so. <sighs> All I'm going to say is, specifically in Australia, when there's a drowning and they find the body later with shark bites out of it, unless they saw it, the person get taken, they just call it a drowning and say that they got bit by a shark after. It happens all the time. I watched Jaws when I was four years old. I don't <laughs> like swimming in rivers. I don't like swimming in lakes. I, I swim in the ocean for some unknown reason, but... All right, no alligators in northeastern Georgia, so we're no, you're okay. safe. All right, so it's 350. Do you want to draw it, or do you want to wait till the very end? I'd be fine with drawing it. I'm fine with drawing it and continuing on talking to everyone. I just Yeah, we give everybody kind of the little, little extra benefit for watching early. Yeah. Um, do you have it up? You want to draw the winner then? Sure. All right, so we're getting ready to draw the winner right now. And again, you don't have to be here for it. So if you, anyone was here earlier, if they just came, signed in, and left, I mean... All winners. Allow repeat. All right, we've got a winner. Uh, oh, Kansas. Right here from Kansas. Yeah. I've uh, got Kyle Young. You are a winner. And let's see here. So, congratulations, Kyle. Uh, we'll go ahead and email. Uh, Right, well, Great Bend's not that close to here. Hmm, I was gonna say not. you just come down and pick it up if you want, but we'll go ahead and ship it to you, but I'll, I'll cover all that in uh, my email to you. I'm looking to see if we had any comments. See if he's still hanging around. I don't see any, but we've had a lot of comments back through here, so. Uh, real quick, Roy, uh, I've just started, well, I mean, it's obviously the one that's designed for it, but I've just started using uh, the captain seasoning on a lot of different fish, and I've yet to try it on anything that's not awesome on. I've tried it on salmon, I've tried it on cod, I've tried it on uh, tuna? Yeah, I tried it on tuna. I even tried it on, uh, you know, a little fake crab meat you get at the store that's really just either shark, flake, or some sort of white meat. Um, it's great on all that. So it's called Captain Seasoning. It's like a mix of, uh, Old Bay, if you ever had that, if you're from the East Coast. Do they have Old Bay down here? Yeah, but I it's don't see huge. a lot of people okay. using it. So Old Bay in, in East Coast is pretty big. Um, so it's like, it's a mix of that, but it's not quite as, I don't know, it's, it's not quite as bold as that, but I mean that in a good way. It's a little bit more subtle, uh, but definitely works well with trout as well. And then, uh, so for next month, we'll get back to a more usual giveaway. 
style that we had, or do you want to keep doing things like this? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We might yeah. do both. Okay. Um, I can see that. We'll because uh, it is definitely fun. I I'm assuming I'm talking for the customers now, but I assume it's fun throughout the month to be able to enter, not just look at one thing. Yeah. I I think we'll continue um, doing something similar to what we've done now, but from year to year, rarely do we do like the exact same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, so I imagine um, everybody out there will see maybe a little bit different, some, maybe something a little bit different from us next year, but yep. still familiar. Um, but we should be able to um, kind of have an outline and a plan for how some of at least the first part of the year is going to go um, by um, January. Probably not our New Year's video, um, but we come, we'll come out with a, another video for January and have some more details there. And we definitely do plan on doing the live stream um, again. I think so. Um, we'll continue to do live streams as long as everybody watches. Um, but how we orient all the giveaways, um, it'll be similar, um, just maybe not exactly the same. Yep. Yeah. But I, it seems like there's a much bigger audience for this than I would have initially thought. Um, and like we've said on each every other one, this is fun for us. Uh, so it's no problem. We'll stay up here and talk as long as you guys ask questions. I think it's a good way for you guys to come and get an immediate answer to something you've always wondered about. Uh, it's just a good way to interact with you guys. So thanks, Kathy. And if we do ever plan a trip to Georgia, uh, I'll absolutely keep that in mind. I don't care. I'll show up at somebody's house. <laughs> if John shows up at your house, do I'm not let him friendly. in. I'm do super not let friendly. Him in. I'm like a big dumb dog. I'm just happy. And <laughs> I do make a mess though. All right. So real quick, just for for things we have coming up. Um, like I said, we've got the. Uh, deer and wild game video that should be pretty cool. Uh, we'll have that coming out in the next just week or two. Um, after that, we're going to get into some of the cured and fresh sausage tuos. Uh, in those, we're going to go over a little bit more information on some of the real basic like science behind like why there are certain things in the ingredients, what different ingredients do, and just little tiny things you can do to be making a better product. Again, some of that's going to be pretty obvious to some of our more experienced users, uh, but there's definitely, the, hopefully, will be something in there for almost everybody. Uh, so you should be able to pick up a couple of good tips on that. And we'll just keep doing those through the Meatistics University and then also putting it on our YouTube. Uh, something else that we have started doing, and we just posted the first one before we got on here, uh, or a version of it at least, we're going to be doing something called Minute Meat Hacks. So it's going to kind of live in the same world as just the Monday meat hacks. Uh, but this will just be quick little one minute videos that we'll post to like Twitter, Instagram, just those other so social media things that don't always get as much attention as they should. Um, and it'll just be a little tip and it might be as simple as making sure that your meat's as cold as possible before uh, grinding it and why that helps. And you know, could be something about the pH of the meat and how that affects water holding capacity. Uh, we'll try to make those fun. Uh, some of those get pretty dry, so there's not a ton of interesting stuff we can do there, but it's just a good way to keep in touch with you guys and try to make sure that whatever you bought from us, whatever seasoning, you're going to get the best possible product out of it. So. so next question, any chance you guys could do a video on operating a traditional stick burner for smoking? Do you have anything there? <laughs> Because I, I don't know how we'd be able to do something. I don't either. Uh, I don't uh, want. I'm just trying to look up. Is it like? Just something that's like an offset type of grill, then, or does it, or be more like the the like the Weber style kettles? I would think more um, along the lines of a Weber style, but we don't have one, and honestly, we don't do a lot with that stuff don't. like that. If it was an offset, we could we could 
fire up the pit boss. Um, yep. Do some playing on that. That's I, honestly something we probably ought to do. People probably get a kick out of that. And we do have um, it, yeah. We've got um, a grill called the Pit Boss from American Barbecue Systems. It, it runs off of charcoal, wood, um, you it's want, got a, really. it's got a pellet attachment as well. Yep. You can it doesn't have propane. We you actually can hook propane up to it. It's a custom mod. I'm, hmm. uh, I'm almost positive we sold one like that fairly recently here. Um, but we could get that thing out. It's a big old grill with a rotisserie in it, um, offset um, smoke box. Um, that's yeah, probably so yeah. Any of those? All right. Yeah. So we'll do something with the pit boss. Uh, we'll just load a bunch of stuff on the rotisserie and just do like a Walton's. Almost like the Fry Fridays we used to do. Yeah, do something do like a that. bunch of pulled pork or brisket mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, 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 we can do that. So we can do that. Um, we'll just video it all. Keep putting it on. Um, I I have a second on the the uh, question that just came through from Parley. When are we going to do restructured deli meat? I really want. I, all right. I really want yeah. some deli meat. No, we're absolutely <laughs> doing it. So our first the one zero. Uh, in Meet Six University, we have a whole section on deli meat, and we kind of ended that first section with making a, a whole muscle deli meat. We just did a roast beef. Uh, again, we did that with Paws Black Pole, and it was amazing. Um, but yeah, two O's will definitely be restructured. That's going to be new to us. Uh, so New to you. You've made restructured? Yeah. I've done uh, ham, roast beef, turkey. Okay. It's been a while. Um, I don't think I've done Would any you do that in while class? you've been here. No. Like here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't like it's it just he's been done a, things before that I haven't. It's just been a long There's time. There's a tone with everything he tells me on how it is. So. No, it's, it's it's just one of those things for some reason we don't do often here. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while. I know we haven't, well, you've been here, yeah. um, at least in the video, or maybe just here in general. At all? Yeah. yeah. But um, like what we call like a party ham. Right. Um, really good. Another good reason to try out the 12 sure. inch slicer. Okay. Because um, that'll slice up deli meat really nice okay. um, but it's not necessarily hard uh, it's just something we don't do very often so yeah that's definitely coming I mean that's in the plans without a question um, Mac asks you just purchase some blue ribbon brought seasoning and some collagen and natural casings to try out which casings do you prefer I like the collagen casings main reason behind that is that you just take them out of the tube or the case or package put them on the tube and you go natural casings you gotta rinse them you gotta soak them. If you got the home pack, you gotta flush the inside with water. I mean, none of that's terribly hard to do, but it is an extra step. Also, I think that natural casings have a tendency to blow out a little bit more. So as you're stuffing them, the side of the casing wall just lets go and sausage starts spilling everywhere. Um, you can get that with collagen casings for sure as well. It's just not as common. Plus I do prefer the bite of collagen over the bite of a natural casing. The main downside to collagen is that it's just not going to accept the twist as well as natural casings. Now you can kind of, if you're making a, a fresh product, you can kind of get around that. If you twist them, leave them twisted, just on a tray, and you freeze them for about 30 minutes once you cut them, they'll hold that twist a little bit, and then as you cook them, they're still going to open, but you won't have that like bulbous end that sometimes you get if you either didn't twist them well at all or they came totally untwisted. Uh, so that is the major advantage over natural casings, or major advantage of natural casings is that they just hold that twist like perfectly. So. Um, still on the, the line of collagen casings, separating when making brats and using them. Um, George is boiling them prior That's to it. grilling. Any ideas for him? Yeah, it's and boiling. It's, yeah, it's the boiling. Um, anytime you do that with any type of casing, except maybe cellulose, um, you might not have as big a problem with cellulose, but if you boil um, collagen or natural, um, they're going to they're gonna come off. There's not much, not much that I know of you can do to stop it. Um, I just wouldn't boil them. Yeah, but I mean, if it's, part of, if it's always been part of your process and that's the way you're comfortable with them, um, I mean... When making a sausage that I'm adding to like a spaghetti sauce, I'll usually boil it too first. Uh, just I've always done it that way. I don't even know why I do it. I think that's the way I saw my dad doing it. Uh, so I boil them first and then I throw them in, just let them finish up cooking. Uh, if the casing does come away like severely there, I just peel it all the way off.
And we've seen recently um, a pretty good uptick in people sharing photos of either what they've made or I am seeing a few on uh, like deers you got on Meatgistics, but we love it when we get to see photos of either food you made or a deer you got that you're gonna turn into food. It's awesome for us. I mean, not only do we try to use that in other areas, like if you post it to Meatgistics, might try and post it on Instagram, Twitter, or something like that. But it's also, it really is neat for us because we do put a lot of time and energy, I mean, it's our job, so, but we do put a lot of time and energy into trying to make sure that you guys have all the tools you need to make the best stuff you can. So when you do do that and we get to see it, it, it's, it is nice for us. So you might get what you think is like a canned response or like, hey, that's awesome. We don't, I mean, we mean that. It's awesome to mm -hmm. see, so. Yeah, and I really hope we keep getting more and more traffic on like the bragging board at Meatgistics. Yeah. Um, I love I love seeing like the trophy deer pictures. Um, so many of you guys out there are deer hunting. I know you guys have pictures. Um, don't be afraid to share them because we love seeing them. And if, um, if you do, um, you might just see it show up um, on like a Facebook repost, um, yep. like John was saying, and we'll, we'll share it out with others as well. Um, one of the new things on Meatgistics um, inside of our little community forums there that I don't know how long ago we started it. It's been within the last two or three weeks, but our urgent 911 oh, section. Yep. Um, I will say I, I uh, do have a little uh, gloating over John because <laughs> he put the urgent 911 category in there. We both have it set up so that when someone posts a new topic, you need something right then and there. We get a notification immediately. That way, even if it's after hours or on the weekend, um, we can help um, answer questions for you guys. But um, the first one we got through was like 11, 11.30 at night or something. I don't remember what it was, but I, I got to answer it before John did. So um, we've only had a few there so far, but a kind of cool little deal. Um, if you guys are ever in the middle of processing and you get stuck and you're like, hey, I don't know what to do, um, we try to answer stuff in there as quickly as possible. Um, so go over to meatgistics.com under the community, Walton's community section, look for that urgent 911 category, um, and um, we'll help you out if you're ever in a pinch and need something right away. Um, now, that's unfair because at 11.30, I've been asleep for about three and a half hours. I go to bed extremely early. I was still up playing board games Ugh. with uh, my wife and some friends. What were you playing? Um, probably Exploding Kittens. We've been on an Exploding Kittens kick lately. Fun okay. game. Have you ever played it? No. No. Oh. Because I'm an adult. <laughs> no, it's... No, I'm not. It's <laughs> not just a kid game. Promise. Best board game is uh, the Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride? I've never heard of that one. Oh. Did you ever play Risk as a kid? No. Huh. We played Monopoly. That was like our game. Like me and my brothers and my sister like is Monopoly every time. Sometimes I guess maybe like Sorry, something like yeah. that. Sorry is a good game. Monopoly dominated our lives as children. We've gotten pretty far off topic for... How do we pull this back into meat? Uh, I don't think you can. I don't, I don't have anything. I think we just lost it. All right. Yeah, so that's another thing that uh, partly saying he's had really good luck sous being brats uh, with collagen casings. The more I play around with sous vide, the more I like it, oddly enough. Um, what I've found it really useful for recently is finishing up things that are taking too long to smoke. Uh, I had a five inch thick that uh, this, this got finished up in a sous vide smoker. Um, I took home a pork butt one night that just wouldn't come up to temp uh, and sous vide it actually overnight. And oh yeah, it takes a long time for the sous vide cooker to get one of our meat lugs up to temperature, long time. It does it. But it takes a while. Yeah. And I left it on overnight at 190 degrees. The next day I came in, I literally just grabbed the bone and it pulled right out. I used our pork puller to shred it, but that was really just for how it looked on the video. <laughs> I mean, my hand was just breaking that thing apart. Uh, so 
sous vide seems to just not be catching on as much as I thought it would, and I don't know if it's because there's extra steps involved or if it's always going to remain kind of more of like a, a foodie thing, but it absolutely is a way to get incredibly tender and perfectly cooked meat every time. I mean, you can't mess it up. You literally, you, you can't. You set the temperature to whatever you want. So for me, for steaks, that'd be like 128, 105, something like that. <laughs> Uh, and then you just leave it in there. I mean, you could leave it in there like six, eight hours. So you could set it when you go to work, come back. It's at the perfect temperature. You just get a pan really hot, sear it a minute or two aside just to give yourself that nice crust. And you've got a perfectly cooked steak. It, it's awesome. It's a really, really good way to do it. Uh, we did brats. My only comment on the brats is the texture didn't seem what I'm used to with the brat. So, I don't know, maybe that was the way we did it. It was one of the first things we did. Um, or maybe it's just me being particular about my brats. Um, E.W. Spears, uh, sorry, I didn't see the first couple questions, but um, does your Blue Ribbon Bratwurst seasoning work well using sure cure and cured and smoked sausages? Um, I would say absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't know that I've ever personally done it, it. Um, but something like that, um, any, any of the Broward seasonings really, if you got a 25 pound batch, um, use the seasoning as it was intended for 25 pounds, add your ounce packet of sure cure, um, turn it into a cured sausage. And I think you'll see that it's similar, um, but it is different because cured meat does kind of change the, the taste of the meat. Um, but it will be similar to what it started out as, as a fresh product. Um, but if you like it as a fresh product, try it as a cured product. If that's what you're looking for. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Um, George talking about, I don't think everybody uses the, uh, the sous vide cooking because everyone's in a rush. I'd say that's true for me because most of the time um, I've, got a, I've got one of the sous vide cookers at home mm -hmm. and um, when my wife and I think about using it, it's too late. Um, like when we're doing steaks, I, wanna, I want them to sit in there for more than just like an hour. It's normally getting close to dinner time and we're like, hey, what are we eating for dinner? Oh, we should do steaks. Oh, if we would have thought about that yeah. four hours ago, we right. could have put them in the sous vide and it'd been perfect. But um, we're usually jumping from one thing to another to another. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, food. Well, we should have started if we we're going to do sous vide earlier in the day. Okay. I've emailed Kyle, so. We're all good there. Gamble for meat and Monopoly. That's how you tie it back in. So put some primal up there. Oh, hey. Yeah. Who has to be the one that forks over? Oh, no, no, no. Brett pays for it. <laughs> and then just the winner of us gets it. I think that's how you do that. We'll see if Brett approves of that. <laughs> uh. Oh, no, so uh, Parley was actually saying that he's had good luck sous vide the brats with collagen casings. Okay, so he was responding to the guy earlier who was uh, boiling them and having problems. So that probably has to do with the fact that you're vacuum sealing it, so the water's technically not getting at it. Yeah. Um, so the water is going to be what destroys it during the boiling process, obviously. But that might work for. Do you remember who it was who was boiling? It wasn't Mac? Uh, um, I can't remember who it was, but if whoever was boiling them is still having the problem, that is a possible um, George. fix to it. George, uh, try getting a vac bag, vac sealing them in there, and you can't quite boil it. Can you boil those bags? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, if you vac seal them, that should fix your problem there. Should. I saw something with a New York strip. Yeah, so Rick is doing a New York strip loin and sous vide for Christmas. If you had a prime rib, I'd do that. We've done prime rib for Christmas, yeah. and I, that's one of my favorite things deep for Christmas is prime rib. But it's good. you do strip loin too, it'd be amazing. Should we try? It'd be interesting. Should we 
try that? Did we ever do anything like that in sous vide? Mm -mm. Um, I don't think we did. Nope. Because all we ever did was like steak. No, we did a, a pork butt. We did, yeah, pork butt, but that ends up, you end up pulling oh, that. Right. It's not a whole muscle that you're only cooking to 130 degrees. Because you could have the whole thing rare. Because even prime rib, you normally have like the outside that's actually fully done, the you inside still that's. Gotta end up searing the outside. You got to. Why? Because you want that little bit of texture there. You have to. How would you sear something that big though then? Just roll it. On what? Well, Just yeah. on the grill or on a pan? On a pan, yeah. It wouldn't be hard. You get a pan with some butter in it, a cast iron pan, screaming hot. Put it down and it'll, that area will sear in 20 seconds. Do it on a, a, little bit. a griddle. Do it on a griddle would be a great way to do it. My, uh, me? Mm -hmm. I think we got an audio problem. <laughs> um. With a torch. That's a good point. Yep. I actually have a torch at home to do that, um, like a food torch. I'd, it'd be more fun to use one of the big, big torches. I don't know if you can or not, because that would do a prime rib a whole lot faster. Um, but I always forget that I have that little torch thing. Um, there's a, that could go fairly quickly. Though. There's a, a torch that you can get, and it hooks up to almost like a heat lamp, but it gets super heated, and they use that for like some sous vides. They'll do that. Mm. And then, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and it just quickly sears the outside of it. And it never touches a pan or anything. I mean, it looks awesome. It also looks really pricey, though. I Sears all. I think sears that's all. what it is, yeah. I either uh, looked at trying to said. stock those or, some, or whoever sells them had asked us about it. I don't remember which way it was, yeah. but ended up not doing it. But they look really cool. Uh, Cajun boudin recipe. So boudin's kind of like the, uh, I don't even know what to say, the, the, the black cat, the, I've done it twice here. <laughs> Screwed it up. <laughs> the first time I put so much sodium erythorbate in it that uh, it just, I would not have killed anyone, we hope, um, but it definitely would have, may have gotten somebody sick. So Luckily, our application specialist happened to be in here with me, and we were mixing it up, and he looked at the bottom of the mixer. He goes, oh, he goes, your sodium erythorbate didn't mix in at all. And I kind of smiled. I'm like, well, I put way more in than that little bit down there. And he just stared at me, and I was like, running it through in my head. I'm like, ah. Oh. I mean, I used way too much. Um, and then the next time, a couple days later, I shot the video again, and the entire thing was out of focus. <laughs> so we haven't given up. We will get to it. Um, but it's going to be a while. Oh, yep. Kyle's already responded, claiming his, his winning. So good for him. But yeah, no, we will get back to Boudin. We'll get that, that done. Um, really, what we need to get on to, though, is blood sausage. Blood sausage is the yeah. last of the specialty sausage. Uh, so that would close out the 1-0s for uh, Meet Your Sticks University. Um, hopefully, just here right at the beginning of the year, we'll have some time to to get that done because I have the feeling it's going to be the type of thing that we have to give it a couple of tries before I'm anywhere near comfortable doing a video on it. So. And then we've got to eat it and I'm not looking forward to eating that. I mean, I'll eat yeah. anything, but blood sausage just doesn't sound good. Um, I'm sure that's something we can at least get Kurt to eat. I'm sure Kurt would oh, enjoy I'll, eating that. Yeah, no, I'll eat it, but. but I don't know if that's something too out of the range for Dylan, but definitely there's enough people around here, we'll, we'll, I mean, it would get ate up. It'll get eaten, yeah. If nothing else, my dog will eat it. Uh, is 26 pound stuffer too large for five to 10 pound batches? No. You'll have about a half a pound or so left in the bottom of the stuffer. Yeah. But no, it's not too large for that. I, well, I personally wouldn't do it with a five pound batch. I mean, if you're doing five pound batches, I would just use the seven pound stuffer. But um, they might not have a seven pound stuffer. They might be looking to buy this and if they can't get... It would do it. Before you do any of that though, the, the main thing you have to pay attention to with that 26 pound electric stuffer is what are you wanting to make? If you're wanting to make snack sticks, 
I'd highly recommend you go with one of the hand crank stuffers. No, yeah, do not use the electrics for snack sticks. Yeah, it just the the motor on it is. It's not that it's not powerful enough. Uh, you'll get bouncing. It just it, it you won't be happy with it. Um, but if you want to make larger, like bratwurst and up size, yeah, I mean it'll work for it. But yes, what he said, if you also have a hand crank stuffer, it's easier just to use that for very small batches. Oh, great question, Parley. Um, so I've got a bit of an obsession with the chicken brats. Um, when I first started back here in the video room, I tried a bunch of times to make a, a good chicken brat out of just chicken breasts. Um, finally, I kind of hit it by adding carrot fiber and cold phosphate to it. Uh, the combination of those two gives you a nice juicy uh, texture, taste, all that. But it really got a lot better when I added about 20% chicken thigh to it. Chicken thighs just have a lot more fat to them. But uh, recently I did something in one of my post responses, something about a ranking of my favorite uh, chicken brat seasonings. Number one right now is definitely the salsa brat. It's awesome with chicken, just works really, really well. Uh, other ones that would be right up in there would be Supreme Pizza, Habanero Mango, uh, Feta and Spinach, and I don't like Feta or Spinach, so I don't know why I like that, but I do. Uh, what else? There's got to be other. There's oh, South of the Border Cheddar Worst. Oh, yeah. Definitely up there. That one was really good in chicken. Then we have so many amazing Broward seasonings, though, that yeah. it, it you can't even go wrong. You could make five pounds of all of them and just rotate through them, eat a bit of this, eat a bit of this. Sure, you could. And when do you that. get through, repeat. It would never, it would, I'd never get old of no, eating brats like that. you wouldn't ever get sick of that. That's one of the best things about, I mean, bratwurst is extremely easy to make. Plus, I would say maybe out of all the sausage seasonings, it has the most. Like, you could try so many different things. So, technically, a snack stick is a sausage. A summer sausage is obviously a sausage. So, when we say that, like, you know, most people think a sausage, you're thinking of, like, basically a bratwurst or an Italian. But that whole category of sausages. So, uh, no. So George, the live stream is not going to be a daily thing. Um, at most, I see it being a monthly thing. It'll be monthly for a while. Um, if it continues to grow, um, it it could potentially be more of a weekly. Um, but at least monthly, yeah. day, daily, we would have to have, have a lot of people watching yeah. to do it daily. Um, someday. Tell all your friends and make it big enough and we'll do it daily. You can't, you wouldn't be able to do. I wouldn't be in yeah, here daily, no. no probably you wouldn't not. be able to be here weekly, I don't think. We could do it weekly if it was a set time and we knew it was happening. Uh, I mean, it's just like anything else on the calendar. Schedule in, schedule around it. Um, 25 pound okay, batch of snack sticks. Yeah. yeah, seems somewhat spongy. Added water, um, sure gel, seasoning, cure, citric acid. Um, go with less water, more fat. Pulled it at 160. Thoughts? Uh, really, to have any real idea, we'd have to know your smoke schedule at that. Um, my thought would be, how much water did you add? Uh, so, when you're adding sure gel, just added sure gel, right? No care if I, okay. Um, that really should keep the water in there so if you went and added two quarts like to a 25 pound batch you might end up with a little bit of sponginess because at that two quarts you're expecting a lot of the water to cook out and it just won't if you've added a bunch of sure gel um my guess though would be something in the cook schedule yeah really hard to say without seeing a little more there Right beneath that, Jim asking about how long jerky will keep in the refrigerator after smoking and drying. Made some habanero lime, but it turned white on the meat. It seems to be all right. If there's white on the meat on jerky, um, I mean, there's a chance that it's mold, but, but it's, it's like most it. likely just salt deposits. Yeah. Um, if I saw white on a piece of jerky I had made after it sat in the fridge for a few days, I'm probably not even going to smell Wouldn't it and check if it's mold. Yeah. I'm just going to eat it. Um, it's just how, how you, your process through... Um, the thermal processing portion or the drying portion, um, it just pools up with a little bit of water, salt and on 
salt and stuff on there and just leaves a little deposit. Um, it's harmless though. Um, how long it'll keep though? That's a loaded question. It's There's so difficult. many factors nope. that go into it on how long it'll truly keep. Um, the biggest one though is water activity. I mean, if you get your water activity low enough, you could leave it out for, you know, not refrigerated, not backpacked for long periods of time and it shouldn't grow anything. Problem is a water activity meter is thousands of dollars. It's not something most people at home want to buy. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it, that's its only function. It's not like it does anything else. Uh, plus pH comes into play there. Uh, I always say this, whenever you're making jerky at home, just assume the worst. So backpack it and keep it in the fridge when you're not using it. Um, that way you always know you're safe. One of the great things about jerky is you, everybody loves to share it with other people because you want someone else to taste this awesome thing you've made. Well, I can't think of really too many things that'd be worse than giving somebody something and getting them sick. So just always assume that it's not shelf stable. So on the same uh, thought, how do you get sausage like pepperoni to be shelf stable? Well, the same thing, part of its water activity, another large part of its pH. Um, we don't do a lot, and that may begin to change here uh, with shelf-stable stuff. Um, we may be getting into it more. It'll just depend on how a few things go. Uh, but I think it's the type of thing there seems to be enough call for it where we yeah. do need to get a couple of at least technically shelf-stable uh, Yeah, we could go through and, and do more in the Meat Justics University on, on giving people guidance on, like, how we do it and what we what what our final product ended. What was the water activity? Um, what was the pH? We can measure both of those here. We do have the fun little tools to do yep. that. Um, but it's still even if we say, hey, this is what we did and this is how we reached it. Um, it's we not. still can't tell you yep. guys, hey, do this at home and it will be shelf stable because you've got to have a process that's exactly the same, repeatable, just as we did it. So even if we get more info there. Um, we'll never be able to say, this is the way to make a shelf-stable yeah. snack stick. We can say, this is the closest we can help you get that direction. Right. Um, but um, to truly get there, um, but also you part, have to test it. Part of that is like doing more like the backdoor firm type stuff, like the dry curing. Like that's what we haven't done in the past. Yeah, that's still all it is, is, is water activity and pH though. I mean, it's the same, same thing for um, using encapsulated citric acid and a mm -hmm. thermal processing schedule. It's just a different way of getting there. Okay, but I don't see like our Willy snack stick. Like I don't see the, the way we have it now. I don't see the, the end goal of that being shelf stable. It can be shelf With something, yeah. but it's really, Yeah. that's our, okay. Uh -huh. I, so I, our commercial processors who make that, they're going for a shelf stable product at the end? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Like uh, the, uh, one of, one of our good customers, Westerns, um, the snack sticks, we have them up in our, our retail store. I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, they they're, put that they're, together they're smaller. Right. Um, they're the super Slim Jim-ish sure, type yeah, yeah. of deal. Um, but I mean, yeah, they're thermal processed okay. type of deal. They're not a dried like a pepperoni. Um, yeah, I've never, I don't know how I've never put that together before, but I haven't. They're big enough that they know exactly right. what the process yeah, is. Yeah. Same thing every time. Right. Um, they're at a different level. Right. Yeah. Um, Steve, if this live stream were daily, I would not be able to get any of my actual work done. Um, sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, um, uh, I don't think we would get any work done either, but it wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, this would be our work. That would be one of the hard things about getting something like this to even to daily for sure, but even weekly, yeah. is will everyone stay engaged that long? Sure. I think everybody can stay engaged once a month. Um, for long periods of time. But yeah. if we did it weekly, we would have to cut it down to an hour somewhere in that range. Because A, these are a lot of fun, but you're going to get sick of hearing us talk about similar things time and time and time again. If we cut it to an hour and just, you know, if we preloaded some questions, that wouldn't be a bad way to do it. So, uh, so Nick says, can you reverse sear with sous vide? And his youngest Toby says, hi. Tell Toby we say hi. Uh, yeah, it's basically a reverse sear with sous vide. It's basically the exact same thing. You just have it at a consistent temperature for long periods of time. 
then quickly sear it each side. I did a video not too long ago where I compared the two of them. Uh, Patrick, did we ever make Wagyu live? No. So we have a video that'll be coming live in the next couple of days where I did exactly that. Um, really similar results. I would say that the sous vide maybe had like a millimeter or two more pink throughout. So maybe a little bit better way to do it, a little bit better results. But I still, I, I prefer the, the reverse sear over any other way of cooking just because I'm stubborn. Uh, lamb sausage recommendations. We just had this recently. Uh, Parley, are you asking for a seasoning or are you asking for like what fat content to add? Um, so fat content, you're going to need to be somewhere in the 70% to 30 to 80, 20 range, somewhere in there. Pork fats, what I would recommend. Uh, if you don't want to add an actual pork fat, you can follow similar thoughts on what I was doing with the chicken sausage, which is cold phosphate. Uh, to change the pH in the meat, to make it accept more water, carrot fiber to hold more water, or sure gel. So don't use carrot fiber and sure gel in the same product. Um, or if you, well, it's a little bit more expensive, but it definitely is a, I don't want to say with the word better, it is a very good binder, uh, super bind. Uh, it has potato starch and carrot fiber. And if you're using something like lamb, which know, isn't always readily available to everybody. You might want to go out and pay a little bit more money to get a better product. So Superbind would probably be a good time to use that. Um, Lee asking about jalapeno flakes. If I, if I can do math right here, um, jalapeno flakes is between like a three to 6% usage. Correct. So if you're doing 10 pounds of meat, that would be up to 0.6 pounds of, pound. of jalapeno flakes, uh -huh. which is like 9.6 ounces. And you want to rehydrate jalapeno flakes in one part jalapeno flakes to five, five parts, parts water. water. Yeah. So, so you'd be around nine and a half ounces? Wet. On the, well, oh, wet. Is that, that would be wet. Yeah, so it's three to six percent when it's wet. Three six percent when it's wet. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes more sense. Yes, I was, I was thinking that would be. We sell them in one point five ounce shakers. Yeah, that would, right. To be a lot of shakers <laughs> for in, ten in pounds. Ten of pounds. Meat. Yeah. Okay. So that's after you rehydrate in five parts water for one part of uh, jalapeno flakes. It's three to six percent of your whatever total weight is. So if you're doing hundred pounds, it'd be six pounds after the rehydrated. I'll say that I find the three percent really light on it. I like things spicy, so. I don't know if I'm the best judge of that, but more towards the five to six percent is going to give you a jalapeno flavor and heat better. So a one and a half ounce shaker um, rehydrated is about 7.5 ounces then. There you go. So that would do about 10 pounds About, of meat. yeah. Okay. Right in that range. Um, how long can I hold meat after mixing the ECA? Uh, first of all, I said this recently on Meat Gistics. I'm strongly pushing that we all just say ECA instead of encapsulated citric acid. So I'm really tight, sick, or sick of typing encapsulated citric acid. And I love just doing ECA instead. Um, here's the problem. So the encapsulated citric acid, the encapsulation on it is a cottonseed oil. So it should not start melting until it gets to 130 degrees. That's assuming a couple of things though. That's assuming that you didn't break it at all as you were mixing it in. It's also assuming that the cottonseed oil is perfectly encapsulated. I mean, you should be able to trust that. I still don't like holding it. I like going right from mixing it in, stuffing, to smoking. The worst that's gonna happen is that the citric acid is gonna release too early in your process and it's gonna denature everything. So you're gonna get a crumbly dry product. I mean, that's pretty bad. That's, it's not gonna ruin your product, it'll still be edible just won't be what you are looking for. Um, so my recommendation is that you don't hold it. Now, if nothing broke in there, I mean, it should be good. It shouldn't actually cause a problem. But if you don't have to risk it, I wouldn't risk it. I mean, you might do it eight times in a row and have no problems, but one of those times something's gonna happen and it's gonna break, your, or break the encapsulation and ruin your product. Okay, 
So, uh, snacks a question, two quarts of water and sure gel, pellet smoker will only go as low as 180 degrees. Uh, left it there attempts 160 degrees ideas. So what a lot of people we've seen do recently is prop the lid of their pellet uh, smoker to get the temperature lower. There's a couple problems with that. I mean, it's, if it's the best you can do, it's the best you can do. Uh, I mean, we realize not everyone's got one of these great PK100 vertical smoke smokers that you know, will do a perfect job every time. Sometimes you're just doing the best with what you got. Um, propping the lid is going to obviously bleed out heat from it, but it's not going to be consistent. Uh, even with my pellet smoker, when the door is closed, I have pretty drastically different zones. I put two ambient temperature thermometers in there once, and one was at, I think at 250 degrees, one was at 210, and the other was at 260 or something. So, I mean, it definitely can be huge differences in there. So while propping the lid is good, it's not infallible. There's issues with it. At what I think you're gonna get the best results is you start in your oven and just as low as you can go. Most of them can do 150. So you start at 150, you leave it in there for about two hours and then you move it to your smoker. I mean, I, I think that's the best you can do. So at least I don't see any problems with doing it that way. No, it'd be fine. Um. Jim asking about more traditional measures for weights. The point per pound measurements can get confusing at times. Is he kind of asking what we did with the conversion charts? Maybe. Maybe. Um, so Jim, we went to, uh, if you go to Meatgistics under the seasonings section, uh, there's a conversion chart that breaks down every seasoning by tablespoon and teaspoon, well, by volume and by weight. Uh, how much per one pound and five pounds of meat. We did that, so if you wanted to make like seven pounds, you just take the whatever five pound breakdown was and add two of those one pounders and you're there. Um, I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, so yeah, we, we've done that for uh, seasonings, we've done that for cures, and we've done that for additives now. Some of the additives get pretty hard to measure, uh, like the Sodium erythorbate yeah. is 0.7 eighths or seven eighths of an ounce for a hundred pounds of meat. So to get that down into the the one pound, I think it was a twentieth of a teaspoon. Of a teaspoon. I think it was something like that. Um, we need to update our conversion chart for like Hawaiian and salsa broth. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, I forgot about I that. Did you measure them? I thought I did, but now I don't remember updating them. No, I don't think I did. I think I just opened them to smell them. Pretty sure that's what I did. Uh, so Paulie's looking for lamb seasoning, or lamb recipes, looking for a seasoning suggestion. Uh, I definitely don't think you could go wrong with the feta and spinach. I think with lamb, that would work really, really well. Uh, another one that might be sound weird, but I think would be really good with it, would be the Reuben. Um, the Reuben is an excellent flavor all Reuben's around, good. and with lamb, I could definitely see that being good. Let me look at them real quick to see if there's any other obvious ones I'm missing. And then we also recently uh, rearranged the way we had all the seasonings. We hope it makes a little bit more sense now uh, for sausage. And the only other one I could think of, probably, that would be good would be uh, the onion and garlic. I mean, I th honestly, I think any of them would be good. Uh, I don't think lamb's that different of a taste that you're going to make something that's going to be bad. Um, I just think that those would probably be your best bets. James asking on the PK100. Um, it's been a while since I did snack sticks in the PK, at least to where it was full. Yeah. Um, he's asking how he can fit 25 pounds in there. Um, I would think you need more than three smoke sticks. You yeah. should be able to get four at least from front to back. I want to say so. It'll, uh, yeah. It's also depending on how you're hanging them. I used to, I don't know why I used to do it. I used to loop them. So like one strand, I'd go over, down to the bottom, back up, down to the bottom, back up. 
So you're losing all that room here. So just figure out the length you need, cut them, and then hang one strand over, cut it again, hang one strand over so there's no loop at the bottom. It's just straight down. So You can get them closer together if they're stacked in. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd seen somebody do it that way, but I always used to do it that way. And Dylan, one time, was watching me. He's like, "What are you doing? Why would you do that?" I'm like, "I don't know." Yeah, lamb is great. I don't eat enough lamb. Uh, but Jim, let us know if that's what you were, what you were uh, asking, because anytime there's, uh, you know, anything our customers need. Obviously, we want to see what we can come up with to, to help them out. That was the whole reason behind the cure conversion chart, the seasoning conversion chart. So, All right, well, I say we give Jim a few more minutes to answer that and then call it a day. Call it a day. I'll say two and a half hours definitely feels a lot shorter than five hours. This was a lot more doable than five hours, yes. yeah. Yeah, I don't feel, I mean, it sounds stupid because we're sitting here talking, but there, after those five hour ones, I was exhausted. Like, legitimately exhausted, so I don't know. It's not like we're, it's like a high stress thing or anything, but it's just <laughs> very tired. It's very stri high stress sitting up in front of the camera. Very high stress. Uh, yeah, so Kyle wants to know if he can pick it up at the store. And he was listening when we oh, said he about perfect. fell out of his chair. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. Just. Yeah, he'll he'll need to talk to Colton. Okay. Make sure he asks for Colton, yep. and we'll get Colton all the details, and um, that makes it easy too. A seasoning that is close to gyro seasoning. Uh, all right. So gyro Greek. Um, like uh, marinated cyclops, cyclops. Well, yeah, that's a. But it's right. What are you talking? Because for marinated cyclops. Um, yeah. What? Uh, but are you talking like a brat? Because a gyro, yeah. which is how you yeah. say <laughs> that word, not gyro. Gyro, uh, mountain mist farm. Let us know what you're making out of it. Um, Gyro seasoning for a brat. Um, pull up our brat list and see what sounds good. <laughs> uh, Do you check the biz site? No. I don't know what that we have in stock. Honestly, I don't eat enough gyros, I guess. I don't know. We have one. What the best deal Greek. would be. Gyro broth seasoning. Yeah. Um, click on it. Um, okay, hold on. Let me calculate this. Is that tw 25 or 12? It said 12. 12? Um, yeah, 12. 12. It's not, not going to be cheap. Uh, be like 12.99 a bag. 
I mean, that's not really any more expensive than some of the other stuff, like habanero brow versus fourteen ninety five or fourteen yeah, ninety nine. With like the habanero, you're talking about the habanero mango or just the regular no, habanero brow? No, just brought? habanero brow. Oh. Um, salsa brow is twelve ninety nine. Blue ribbon brow is twelve ninety nine. Okay, so it's a so little it's more in expensive. That range. So we could we could get something. And who who asked that question? Um, Mountain Mist Farm. Um, we could we could definitely get Excalibur carries a gyro brat seasoning. Um, we'd have to order at least a case of it, um, or we could get some in and try it. We'll have to take a look. It'd be around, like I said, um, um, twelve ninety nine a bag, similar to what the other brats are. Um, it might be something we're trying. Every time we add a new flavor, um, seems to go over well. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do. If you want a special order, a whole case though, um, email us at cs at waltonsinc.com, and we can order a whole case. It's like a three-week lead time, um, but we'll look into it and see if that's something that maybe we can try try carrying. Um, uh, I would like to try to make that. I think that would be really good. Okay. whole thing going on about the grill on it. Yeah, Jim, what kind of phone do you have? Um, do you have an iPhone, Android, um, and whichever way you go there, what's, what, what model do you have? Um, I'd be curious to know, and I can, I can do some quick looking to see if the uh, uh, Bluetooth in the phone you have is 100% compatible with what's in the grill eye. Um, there are different versions of Bluetooth. Um, but um, if I can get some information for you there, um, I can try. If not, sometimes the best answer there is getting a hold of the manufacturer, um, asking them directly because they um, deal with a lot more people that yeah. buy these than just we do, and they may already know, oh, you have a, a Galaxy S8, um, and when it doesn't work right, here's what you do to fix it. I think I get what he's talking about, though. I think he's saying when he's... So when you don't have a phone connected to it on the display setting, it does default to Celsius. And if you don't have your phone to change that, I don't believe there's, I don't believe there's a way to switch that. Yeah. I'm gonna play with it right now though. I almost guessed right. What's uh, up? He had a Galaxy S8. Um, <laughs> oh, look at you. He just upgraded to LG V40. All right. Oh, I have to get a probe. Was I right on what he was asking about or? Yeah. Okay. All right. So see right here, if it's not connected to anything, it defaults to Celsius. So he's wanting to find a way to change the default to what if Fahrenheit. It? Yeah, usually it's like, is there's only the one button on there, right? Just the one button on here, yeah. Like double tap it, triple tap it. So I'm trying. Um, why don't they just... I'm sorry, I thought we were in America. <laughs> I still hold with, I would absolutely be willing to switch to uh, like millimeters, centimeters, and Celsius if the rest of the world learned English. I think that's a fair trade-off. I'd be willing to do that. Okay. So from the unit itself, good job, Patrick. Our uh, video editor just managed to make it under the, the camera. Oh, my. All right, so I'm gonna see if there's a way to like change the settings for good by connecting with my. Huh. 
huh, there's not even a... But now that it's connected to Wi-Fi, it automatically changes to Fahrenheit. So, I mean, that's exactly what he was saying. Really? Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. What could the possible purpose of that be? I think the best bet there is exactly what you said, is we'll contact the manufacturer and try and find out. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. Feedback and support. Quick or easy in their manual? No. I'll, I'm going to send them a message that says, stop using communist based measurements <laughs> uh, but no we'll we'll get in touch with I mean this is they're very at least my experience with them has been very positive with the company so we'll try and get in touch with them and find, see if we can't find an answer to that um, and if we get it in time for tomorrow I'll put it in my blog post on Meetgistics so oh he's not able to get it to connect to Bluetooth at all yeah that's part of his problem oh is that's why um, oh, then. He's looking at it that way. Then, sorry, I misunderstood, Jim. I just thought it was for some. Well, I guess I just didn't think about that. Yeah, then you should contact uh, Grill Eye. Uh, your like the firmware on your phone, all that. Anything might come into play. Um, so I would have him contact uh, them directly. Was there a support thing in the app, though? Yes. Yeah. So if you go to the app. Uh, Delete draft, get out of here. Uh, go to settings, and then at the very, very bottom of settings, uh, there is, at the very, very bottom of settings, there was, <laughs> uh, sorry, so if you just go click on the three lines in the upper left-hand corner, at the bottom of that is feedback and support. If you send them a message directly from there, I believe it preloads all your information. Yep, like mine, it automatically puts my device, my uh, firmware, my, Grill Eyes firmware, so it gives them all that information. So they should be able to help you out with that. Yeah, uh, the ability of this to connect to Wi-Fi makes it a lot more valuable to me, at least, than the old one, because I'll have this out on the back deck, and with Bluetooth, it's just not going to connect all the way into our office in here. But with the Wi-Fi, I can sit here, and all of a sudden, I've completely forgotten I've had something out there. It's happened multiple times. All of a sudden, we beep, 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 beep. We started beep, getting beep, more beep, productivity beep, out of John <laughs> when he wasn't making trips back and forth to the smoker. Yeah, when I wasn't getting 18,000 steps a day. Um, Other than that, I think, uh, I think we've hit everything today, and that looks like we covered all the last bit of questions that came okay. through. Um, so unless you got anything else, I'm I think good. we might be calling it a day. I'm good to call it a day. Cool. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, hopefully we'll do it again. And if we don't see you between now and Christmas, hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas. And uh, uh, you'll see us soon in a fun little video around New Year's. Some of the bloopers aren't good, guys. It's going to make me look like not a very good person. <laughs> but they'll be fun to watch. So It's okay. See Merry you guys. Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas.